I got this. Okay. Ah, uh, I got it. Okay. Uh, I got some beers. Let's drink them, huh? Uh, Why don't you follow me down to the brewery? I tie a bowling ball to my ankle, dive in the vat of beer. I leave this world the same way I entered my marriage, dead drunk. Hello. Want a beer? Hook it up. Hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. Hook me up. Yo, Herb, take it from the top. One, two. Beer. This is how we do it. My mic sound nice. Check one. My mic sound nice. Check two. My mic sound nice. Check three. I remember when I had my first beer. You like parties? Yeah. We can invite all our friends and have soda and pie. Yeah. I hope no bad people show up. My mic sounds nice. Check one. My mic sounds nice. Check two. My mic sounds nice. Check three. My mic sounds nice. Check four. My mic sounds nice. Check five. My mic sounds nice. Check six. Are you ready? You want some of this milk? rather have a beer. What do you guys give me if I kill that bird? Harvard, that's a bald eagle. Get away, baldy! Yeah! Oh, what up? What up and what up? This is The Work with Mike, Pete, and Steve, GovsRadio.com. We are live here on GovsRadio.com. We are also streaming live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Go to the Govs Radio uh, Facebook page and the Govs Radio YouTube page and find us there, streaming live. And, of course, all of our shows are on GovsRadio.com. And if you go tomorrow to all of our platforms, including uh, we'll talk about Spotify, we'll say a little iTunes, uh, the Laughable app, full of comedy and galore. I don't know if that's the actual noun for it, but it is galore. And then, of course, uh, we are also available on the Hopped Up motherfucking network. Hopped Up Network. Go to hoppedupnetwork.com for podcasts from all around the world about craft beer in their regions and in their areas. Tonight, we we are sponsored... What? A huge deal we got from Spotify following Joe Rogan. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Is that the Spotify? (laughs) That was the Spotify plug. There you go. We'll, we'll take one tenth of what Joe Rogan got. <laughs> and I'll take fucking one percent. I don't one. know how much it is, and I know I'd be set for life on. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> on one third of one percent of Joe Rogan. Someone had to build the compound that he wants to build in Texas, so it's got to be Spotify, the Spotify Studio, and te- yeah, he wants to move to Texas. A oh, big yeah. long story if you're following him. Uh, yeah. Tonight we are sponsored by a couple of people. We're going to start off with Pete. Pete, go ahead. Who are we sponsored by? Brewbag. If uh, regular cornhole isn't alcoholic enough for you, uh, and it <laughs> shouldn't be, uh, Brewbag combines uh, cornhole and beer pong, uh, which is great. Everyone remembers playing beer pong back in uh, college or yesterday, your post college years, <laughs> or this past weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, great game to play. If you play regular cornhole, you can uh, play uh, beer pong, which is great. It comes with plugs to put in the uh, in the board and you can uh, visit our instagram page and there's a link to go to brew bag and uh, save 10 percent. there you go Using promo code word uh there's uh several sets available i was bruising before there's uh vinyl wrapped ones there's uh natural wood there's yep. stained wood some cool designs good yep. stuff very cool brewbag.com like pete said uh, in our bio Go to our link tree, and then you'll find the brew bag link for 10% off your brew bag today. And we have another sponsor. This is our one of our favorites who just sent us some fine, fine tap handles here. Thanks. Like oh, it. look at that. Fancy. Thank you, Nick. Steve, take it away. Nick from Rosie's Draft Solutions. Yeah, Rosie's Draft Solutions. Uh, uh, Rosie'sDraftSolutions.com. Uh, they will take care of all your draft solution needs. Uh, they do installs. Uh, maintenance, cleaning, and and this is all professional, but they also do uh, for your home kegerator, 
They will do line cleanouts. They will replace lines. They will get your kegerator up and running. They will get you a kegerator if you don't have one. And then they'll uh, clean the shit out of it. And they will clean the fuck out of those things. So the, the beer that's running through it is delish. Um, they are uh, located in Patrick. They're a family-owned business. Um, you can actually contact Nick, uh, 631-219-2075, between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m., uh, seven days a week. Or you could go to rosiesdraftsolutions.com. And uh, let me tell you, uh, we used them when we uh, had Barrage open, and they did a fantastic job. Those guys were the best. I recommend them for everyone. And go to, uh, I think it's uh, rosiesdraftsolutions.com. And if you call Nick, tell him the work sent you, uh, just to give him a little plug. And especially because these tap handles are, are pretty dope. So thanks a lot, buddy, for Sweet. that. I like them. I'll run through the rest. We are sponsored by VintageBeerClubShirt.com. Vintage Beer Club Shirt for your uh, monthly subscription to these old vintage beer shirts, Buffalo Beer and uh, uh, Tudor and all these crazy old uh, logos on some flashy, colorful shirts. Go to VintageBeerClubShirts.com and uh, type in the promo code WORT for, uh, I forget what it was, maybe it's 10% off your order. VintageBeerShirtClub.com. It's a lot of words. Uh, We're also sponsored by uh, Brewers Hardware. Love Brewers Hardware. Will out in Brewers Hardware. Uh, doing it right. Uh, I don't know how much you guys, uh, Dan, that you guys use uh, Brewers Hardware, but I have a gift certificate I'm going to send you in the mail after tonight. Uh, they gave us some stuff to give out to the Brewers that were guests on our show. So we're going to be a uh, patron of Brewers Hardware <laughs> very, very I soon. I have an address. I nice. like that. There you go. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I have it. I, uh, so we'll uh, send that out to you uh, this week. Thanks a lot, Will, from Brewers Hardware. Go to BrewersHardware.com. And also, uh, I think he has a promo code for us. Uh, of course, everything is WORT, W-O-R-T, and uh, save some money today. And uh, last but not least, Tavor. Tavor for beer shipped right to your door. Go to Tavor.com and get beer delivered anywhere in the country right to your door. Even Hawaii. I believe Hawaii was on there because I think there are Hawaii breweries that are participating in Tavor. So That's go to so Tavor.com. Far. So yeah, as soon as the volcanoes erupt, we will not get that. That's soon to come after in this 2020 of ours. Uh, and anything no else? Joke. I have? Yeah, that already happened in 2019. Don't <laughs> don't ruin the dream I have of going back to Hawaii. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to find a DeLorean with a Mister Fusion to do that, buddy. Uh, quick shout outs to um, TapHandles.com. Go to TapHandles.com for your tap handle needs, and of course, uh, our buddy Jeff Hartwell off at Hartwell Woodshop for your rich mahogany needs. Go to uh, HartwellWoodshop.com. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, that was a lot longer than usual, but we. Uh, fully described our sponsors tonight tonight we have in the house or in your house because that's where we're coming to everybody's house we got dan from single cut what a buddy hello guys how are you thank you again for joining us we're great uh really appreciate the time you're giving us tonight and uh i know very very busy in uh your phase three here coming up in new york city and Something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> at this point, do you even know? Like, like, just give me tell, tell me what I need to do today. Yeah, we should have. Um, we're going to start using decimal points yeah. soon. <laughs> so I think right now it's like 3.1. 2. 1, 2. 1. I like that. Yeah. It's a good call. Yeah, um, it's good. You know. Single cut in Astoria, and you have a second location, correct? Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we're based here in beautiful Astoria, Queens, which is where I am right now, looking out at the, uh, the Hellgate Bridge and oh, that's East cool. River. Just beyond that and then uh we've got a second brewery our our big boy brewery and that one's up in saratoga county it's in a clifton park uh in the up in the capital region upstate Mm. for us capital region for them they they get a little testy i know i know i bet they do (laughs) yeah they really really they like it by their regions i think that's why we've been getting it by the regions they're just like we are the finger lake region don't tell me i'm upstate yeah, it's, it's very specific. I, I'm pretty sure if you're Quebecois, you're you're upstate New York, and everybody else is debatable. Yeah. I was gonna say, what if, if would it be the Canada region? Is that, is that... <laughs> that's it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you know what a polar bear looks like, uh, in person, if you've seen penguins upstate. visiting right. your brewery, if you can see Canada from your house, <laughs> you know I something. We can have a we running. can have a really low rent comedy tour off of this one riff. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start booking us some dates. Virtual, for we'll do virtual comedy tours. Charge oh, people five bucks, we'll make a fortune. The market is rich. <laughs> it sure, it has to be. There's nothing else to do. Even like Governor's Comedy Club, where we usually broadcast out of, they uh, they kind of moved outside. They had this 
big old area on a, they call it the governor's patio. Uh, but unfortunately, it can only service like 30 people, whereas the club itself can hold, you know, 200. Uh, and it's it, it's just hurting everybody, especially like these uh, breweries, obviously bars, uh, restaurants, and comedy oh, venues, yeah. or any small venues for that matter, where craft beer can be served. It's got to be hurting those revenue streams. Dan, give us a, a quick history about the brewery and bring yeah. us up to date with how you guys are coping with what's going on. Yeah, man. So uh, we opened in 2012. So even though we're just coming up on our eighth birthday, we've been around for a little while in like the New York game. Uh, New York City was 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 late for sure. Mm. Um, obviously, there's some pretty big costs and some pretty big risks involved with brewing in New York City. But even then, we were we were a little behind the curve as far as like craft beer goes. Um, you cats out on the island were were quite a bit ahead of it is where we were. Um, so yeah, 2012 we opened. Rich Pasetta is the founder of the brewery. Um, he's still the the chief brewer, uh, president, chief creative officer too. He does like all of those awesome labels. That's all from direct from Rich. Uh, we kind of opened up the brewery with like essentially three goals. Uh, the first two are practical, and one was uh, there wasn't a lot of fresh IPA being done in New York City. Um, I'm not even 100 percent sure there was like a 365 IPA being made when we opened. There might have been. There there was a few really good ones, but. It was definitely kind of underserved. And the second thing we really wanted to do, which is a little bit more of a, you know, the brewer's fetish, is we wanted to do traditional lagering, uh, which was something which and, wasn't done. They, that's what turned me on to you guys was. Oh, yeah. When I heard that you guys were doing like real legit lagers, I was like, oh, this is this is going to be awesome. And it was. Yeah. It still is. And anyone it out was- there making all the jokes about how brewers can't find a decent lager. They'll find them. Trust me. They'll they'll network. Yeah. All the brewers, you know, complain make lagers great again, because that's one brewers. of their go tos. A lot of brewers feel that way. If you can make a good solid lager, it right. says a lot both about your, your brewing and, of course, you know your direction. So, I actually had one of them. Um, it wasn't in this. It I already drank both of them by the way because they were delicious. Um, it looked like a um, origami. Uh, figure. Oh yeah, the Maybach. Yeah, yeah. The all in all is all. That was ah uh, yes, great. there it is. Yep. That was yeah, delicious. kind of a mouthful, but I listen yeah. to you guys do your sponsor read. You're used to the mouthful, man. Oh. Like a champ, though. VintageBeerClubShirt.com. I'm getting used to it. They're Nailed relatively it. new sponsors, so. You skipped over the WWW. No, oh, I don't know. I, I am anti WW. I am anti. Right. People say, then you might as well just go HTTP colon backslash backslash. Go ahead. HTTPS. <laughs> All right. It's got to be secure. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I like that. Don't take shortcuts. I know. It's right on their label. <laughs> <laughs> it is but yeah the, the so, lager uh steve's right you know kind of kind of set a tone there so i mean it's hard i mean 10 years ago um craft breweries weren't really making a lot of lagers and it's kind of all uh early craft beer guests wanted to drink more or less i'm generalizing obviously a lot um then flash forward and you know uh there's great lagers uh now and uh you know and guests want to drink it but still everybody just wants to buy ipa which no complaints. I mean, those are our two great loves. So we're happy to, to, to make all the beer people want to drink, but it's, yeah, it's a little hard. Everybody's kind of, you know, 2020, the year of the lager. We've been saying that since 2020, you know, 2017. Uh, it's great. It's just, we got to stop acting like um, the whole world wants to buy expensive lager. It's just a little treat for us. That's all, you know, and that's, that's what it is. And that's kind of how we started the brewery was that same concept. I mean, from like a value proposition, lagers suck. I mean, they're really expensive to make, man. I mean, that Maybach that you drank earlier today, that came out in May. You know, we brewed that guy in March because we wanted to have a traditional Maybach. It lagered for basically 100 days Jesus. for all intents and purposes. And that's, a, and that's like 40 or 50 more days than if you had made an ale in that same, right? Yeah, I mean, for that particular beer, I mean, that's almost 80 days more than we would have uh, than we would have taken to make a, even a double IPA, you know? <laughs> And uh, like our uh, Oktoberfest, which we're super proud of, it's it's one of the cleanest and and really most nuanced Oktoberfest I think it's on the market. Uh, and I hope you accept my compliment because I'm not the one who made it or made the recipe for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just get to drink a lot of it more than my fair share. <laughs> but we're brewing that some bitch in like two weeks. Wow. You know, and it's not going to come out until you know almost the end of September. So. The value proposition. So it's not coming out Labor Day weekend. (laughs) I'm so glad to hear that. I love Marzins, but I don't want to drink them Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I feel you on that one for sure. (laughs) There's something about that. Like, 
Well, they got to get the pumpkin out first. That's within. I a fucking week hate seeing that. God, End of August, it comes the pumpkin rolling out. Oh, boy. We're gonna do a, an all seasonal beer this year. It's gonna be um, pumpkin, uh, Christmas spice, uh, spring lager uh, with hibiscus for the summer. <laughs> nice. And it's just gonna be it's just gonna be poop brown. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That's the way I like all my beers. the adjuncts. <laughs> That's right. And we're just gonna get it all out in one shot. That's it. That's right. Check all and, uh, well, and the, the third thing we wanted to do when we opened the brewery is we're all big music nerds. Um, all of us are musicians, uh, different skill and accomplishment. I always make the same joke, but it's true. I mean, I'm on the, the low end of both of those things, but you know, some of our, we have a, you know, we have brewers who are, you know, professional touring musicians who kind of gave it up because they wanted to pursue beer. Uh, Rich himself is a pretty accomplished musician who kind of segued into the ad game before uh, he got into brewing 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, one of our two brewers is a former tour manager or recovering tour manager, probably as he would describe it, you know, <laughs> um, you know, so that's really in our DNA. So we really wanted a place. And by we, I mean, really rich at the time, wanted a place to simply like have all the musical equipment, have a music venue inside of a brewery, which is something we've done since day one. And frankly, a place to put our giant uh, record collection that wasn't, you know, in our house. <laughs> uh, you know, those are obviously stragglers at this yeah. point, you know. <laughs> The best of the greatest the hits. Clients. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we uh, we rock and rolled with that since 2012, um, growing slowly but surely. Uh, really wanted to make sure that our beer got out fresh and kind of disappeared quickly. So, um, yeah, we got a little bit bigger each year. And then years three and four and five and six and seven started to get a little bit crazier and bigger. And come 2018, we just couldn't uh, sustain it anymore. We, you know, it's fun having a line outside of your brewery uh kind of but it's a lot more fun um having people be able to get your beer and not have to like stress about it <laughs> um, which was really important to us um and for us you know we were we were very introspective in 2018 we're like man it would be great if you could go to like a nice grocery store and find our beer in the refrigerated section in a cold shelf and is it the most expensive thing in the grocery store maybe you know for that area but to be able to go get it have it be quality have it be fresh really really hold up and not have to go and um, labor for it, you know, that was where we were at, you know. Uh, you know, people who are into like craft beer hobby and are super into the, the line culture, we totally get that. We, we've been there too. We go and hang out at our friends' breweries sometimes, wait in line, get the release, all that. That's a lot of fun. But, you know, at the same time, grabbing a four pack of super high quality stuff and enjoying it in your backyard was a little bit more what our DNA was. So when we purchased Single Cut North in 2018, that was really our whole our whole backing behind it was we need to have like the muscle to be able to to fill that demand the right way, be able to keep up our quality the way we want. Um, and we were super fortunate that we were able to find that uh, that opportunity. And we put together a staff who was just like, I'm going to I'm going to well up a little bit. They, they're making me so proud <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the, the brewery uh, North. Um... What what size is that compared to what you guys have in Astoria? It's a big boy for sure. Um, actually, both of our systems are pretty big. So, Steve, I know you're a brewer, so I mean, like, um, so Queens is a 35 barrel system, so it's a it's an oversized. I mean, I think it's 30 on paper. It's 40, you know, for all intents sure. and purposes. And then we brew out into 90 barrel bright tanks, or I'm sorry, 90 barrel FDs. Um, that facility, without killing ourselves, does about 10,000 barrels a year. Okay. Wow. Um, and then it's 5,000 square feet. So it's tiny. I mean, we're New York City, right? Yeah. It's all up. Well, hey, that's all it is. You put bands up on top of your uh, your bathroom. So that's pretty <laughs> That's cool. right. Bands on the bathrooms. That's all good, man. Actually. Kick drum yeah. while I'm pooping. It's all good. That bass helps. You it know? sure does. It's good. It's probiotic. <laughs> <The> ground note. <laughs> ground note. No, nah, wrong, uh, wrong brewery. That's... Uh... Uh, hey, that's, uh, oh, against the grain. Against the grain. Against Thank the you. Grain, yeah. I've been that's there. Right. Louisville, right underneath the uh, Louisville Bat Stadium. It's a weird the, the, Wow. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's, to... it's like going to the Ducks, and underneath the Duck Stadium is the brewery. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is wow. this? But it's right on street level, so you know it still seems like a retail space. And then right across the street is Angel Eyes uh, Bourbon. No kidding. Yeah, huh? distillery is right there. Oh, that sounds like a good trip. Yeah, right oh, there. it's a good one. <laughs> I was supposed to go this year. <laughs> Not no more. <laughs> oh well. Oh, well. don't worry. They're taking it very seriously in Kentucky. Yes, they sure. No are. Time. <laughs> Thank God I'm not there then. Uncle Mitch has got you. Don't worry. He's working on it. <sighs> I like it. 
Don't I, uh, say his name two more times or he's going to He's going to appear behind me. <laughs> he's going to be right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd terrible. rather have Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Candyman seems like he'd be cooler to have a beer with. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you guys, 2012, uh, entered the scene and right. started off with that exact building, same layout. Everything has pretty much stayed the same from 2012. Uh, only from the outside, the inside, we've, we've redone that thing a few times I nice. think, at this point. There's a whole second level that we built so we can move some like administrative offices. That shit's boring, but you know, <laughs> to actually be able to increase production and then the back is totally maxed out. So, uh, at this how point, we, we can't touch it. One more time, Steve. Uh, how many logger tanks you guys got back there? So originally we had four big boys. So right. we had two 30 barrel, two sixty barrels. Now we just have two sixty barrels. We had to move the, th the 230 barrels out to put in our canning line about a year ago. And then there you go. Uh, yeah. For that uh, one. Which was great because uh, we wouldn't have, you know, COVID would have been really tricky without it. You know? Yep. For sure. So thankfully for us, we have upstate. We have single cut north, uh, which to answer your, your direct question is is actually eight times the size of Queens by square footage. Wow. Wow. 40,000 square feet. The system up there is a lot bigger too. It's a 50 barrel, but it's a five vessel system. So. If it's like normal strength beer uh, under ideal circumstances, you know, we can churn out the better part of like 300 barrels a day out of that system. And they all go into Jesus. 200 barrel and 100 barrel uh, FBs. So nice. that's, that's basically where we do like all of our bulk cans. That's where like our 18 watt, our weird and gilly, our softly spoken magic spells, which is what I'm drinking right now, mm. all come from. And then in 2019, we started what we called our uh, uh, community brewing project, which for all intents and purposes is a, uh, contracting services which are available for breweries who have already made investments into their uh into their communities so if you've already built a brewery you've already hired a staff you're supporting your local economy um those are the folks we like to work with so we help nice. brew basically additional capacity so uh, yeah yeah we brew for some of my favorite breweries too with uh, we work with rare form up in troy ah, I love uh, rare. yeah kcbc and threes down in brooklyn are both with us which is fucking awesome we love those cats uh, but he's at Common Roots up north, and some really cool guys out of Vermont called Ten Bends, who make great mm. beer. And uh, where are uh, they in Vermont? They are in Hyde Park, and I can't believe I pulled that out right now. <laughs> They're in Hyde Park. <laughs> <laughs> Rolodex, get Hyde Park. There it is. I would have a real hard time with it. <laughs> Names are not my strong suit. And we just started making a by just a couple months ago a hard ginger beer. Um, actually, really? who, I've been a huge fan of this company for years. It was a really serendipitous and awesome phone call we got. Our friends at Halyards out in Burlington, who you're going to be able to actually purchase in New York in a couple of weeks, mm. um, very, very, very soon, uh, which is dope. I, I really can't recommend it enough. Um, nuanced, really balanced, super spicy, which I love. Um, yeah, like, it's, uh, it's, it, like a Gosling's or yeah. So imagine or like yeah, you remember Crabby's, the British oh, brand. Yeah. You know those guys. Mm. Imagine Crabby's, but I mean, frankly, better and spicier and drier. Uh, it's awesome, man. It's great to have them for the, you know, the cooler for the barbecue is cool, but doing cocktails with it is. Uh, it's, so I was yeah. just going to say, is it a mixer, right? I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be adding my dark rum to it immediately. Oh, man. Dude, how <laughs> good is that in the summer, too? Oh. I mean, I've been drinking uh, margaritas, and I haven't drank Respect. hard liquor in a long time. 20, 20 years as a bartender making so many, I just was like, I can't, I can't drink them. And now, you know, two or three years left of it i'm like hmm, i kind of want a margarita not rocks i'm not you know doing going crazy but it's one of those things you know like i, I used to love my dark and stormies and sure. as a bartender i'd make them behind the bar just have them to sip on throughout the night and then i think i got to get back into it again i think if i, I would, would love to try it with this ginger beer that's what you say uh ben oh, yeah what was the name of it they're called halyards 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 yeah yeah out of, out of burlington they're they're dope that's one I gotta try. I gotta get back. How into bad that. do those? Uh, how bad do those margaritas put you on your ass now as a grown ass man? Uh, it's not right? as bad. I'll be honest with you. I, I do fifty fifty. It's fifty tequila, fifty percent. Uh, yeah. You know the mix. I have maybe one, and then I start drinking. You know, eight percenters afterwards. There you go. Um, I was just telling the guys before this. You know, I'm down here now three days a week in my basement doing shows. I do this, and then I I, I have a poker night with my buddies up in Boston and Maine, and I that's the Boston and Maine night. I do margarita right away to start the night and then uh i do another show on our station i um do the the board opping and technical stuff and i start that show every time with a margarita and then i go right <laughs> to my beer 
So it, I'm actually kind of used to it. I've been really good. I don't know about you, but I've been really good uh, during this to not start drinking before five. Today was a little bit of an exception, um, but you know it, that's definitely helped. And but once yeah. five once five o'clock comes around, it's on. I mean, I'm I'm full force, <laughs> no turning back. So I, I I've been it, it does does hit you hard a lot harder than even the eight percenters do. What's what's your drink, Dan, other than beer? Oh man, yeah, we're margarita fiends for nice. sure. Nice, yeah. Um, I'm not holding down. You'll find me passed out in the garden out in front of our apartment. <laughs> that's that's where I'll yeah. be at. Yeah. Um, we we've been crushing a lot of micheladas lately too. You guys mess with those? What is that? I've, I saw that on. Uh, um, help me out here. That uh, beer account we all love. Why can't no chaser? It? No. Uh, Never mind. I'm sorry. It's not. Uh, what, what is a michelada? I'm glad you weren't asking me for help because I have no idea what Instagram account. <laughs> Wurt Wrangler. Sorry. Yes, Wurt Wrangler. Wrangler. Of course, Wurt Wrangler. Michelada is like kind of a, an ambiguous um, uh, recipe, you know, it's like uh, different people have got their different ways. Um, but basically what it is for all intents and purposes, you want like a no fail version, ice, Clamato, mm-hmm. okay. beer of your choice, lime juice, some salt. If you're into that, I am Yep. Uh, hot sauce mm-hmm. to your, to your taste. And, uh, Almost like a like a Bloody Mary with beer, kind of for all intents and purposes. Yeah, oh, for sure. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you can, uh, you know, depending on your access to stuff, you can definitely dress it up. But I guess the same as the Bloody Mary. Sure. The, the flavors like maybe um, trend a little bit more Mexican than New England, but aside from that, like it's pretty pretty similar. Hmm. And uh, we made a pretty dope breakthrough yesterday after years of you know going with the Mexican lager to make it, which is delicious. Uh, we ran out of Mexican locker yesterday, uh, simply. Uh, we went through all the Modellos, and then we went through, we had Echo of Nothing from Threes, who are incredible locker makers, by the way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what else do I got? I'm like, I have a whole fridge full of dope, fresh, single-cut IPAs. What do we have to lose? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we mixed it up with some uh, some of our Super Bon Bon triple IPA. Ooh. Uh, which is I like all that in a while. Wow. That's that was a big boy. That was fun. That was our yeah. little COVID treat to ourselves. <laughs> uh, but it's this super, super juicy without um, being like too uh, spineless, you know, triple IPA. So it's got a good amount of bitterness to it. Right. A lot of pineapple, a lot of mango. So blending it up, you know, it was very fruity, but it had this really cool kind of like um, chili mango thing going on that was super good. Hmm. I was in love that does with sound that. delicious. So that's the new go-to. Man. Might have to try that one day. Uh, Please. Put a little sriracha in there next time. There you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, Different God, kind of I heat than that. Sriracha. We were working with the Cholula, but the sriracha would have been good. That little sweet that's and spicy. Cholula's you know? good yeah. shit, too. We went, we went with the all the all spice and vinegar, but th- I like that. That sounds delicious. Mm. Yeah, I got to mess with that. <laughs> try it out. I Sapporo. It'll and be then the mix in the part. sriracha. Oh, yeah. Go yep. full Asian. Yep. Keep it nice and dry. Yeah, I love yeah. those. Those Japanese rice lagers are my. That's my like. It's so. Go-to. It's so fucking great. It's uh, just a no frills, really clean lager. I love it. Love Sparrow. Love the can too. Oh, uh, dude, the you talking about the the hard shell yeah. ones? Yeah, yeah. The, it's not perfectly spherical. It's, it's nice. like right. it's like yeah. a good sexy waistline. Yes, it's got some curbs to it, man. Uh-huh. It's got some. It's got some juice. I don't it's, know why I think yeah, of it that way, but uh, yeah, never mind. I'm okay. leave my that Sapporo's got some hips. Love it. They sell them by the singles in my bodega, so that's an easy go to. Oh, there you yeah. go. Of course. I um I, I so I've been to I I won't say been inside, but I've been outside of single cut. I think there at the time was an event going on. So when I did travel over, um I couldn't make my way in, but there was a local store I I mean probably right around the block. And they had plenty of your stuff right on the shelves. So it was very easy to find. And we've been getting it out here, actually, uh, today, um, went off, I was mentioning before the show. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, Pete, uh, Pete brought over Electric Blue. I drank the one that I had immediately. And then I was like, I need more of the single cuts. And so I went to probably a block away, and my guy had it. He had two. He had the, uh, the Electric Blue, grabbed me a four of that. And then um, the other one is, uh, I know what it is. Did we say it before? That's tank weed. That's tank weed right there. Which one? Yeah, is we it? try and get the kind at all times. Yeah, there you go. That is good. Oh, is this real life? I, I, I oh, knew. nice. Yeah. Probably I, I, not. It's probably a simulation. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where the can art looks. <laughs> ah, I've seen that. Yeah. I think I've had that one. That one's good. So I, I, uh, I, I've had a number of them, and one of the great things about single cut has always been its identification on the shelf. I think it stands out to me. A lot of the artwork kind of pokes his head oh, through thanks, other man. things. Um, because of not only just what it is, but the, it's almost, I like more simple things. Just simple. Here it is. This is what it is. And I also love. Too is, it's always that, the crown. Yeah, the crown. The crown is and old. then to me, it's always the, that side label. That side oh, label thanks, is man. what I'm looking at every single time because it gives you exactly what you want to know. Um, tells you the IBUs. It tells you the uh, ABV. Of course, it tells you if it's a dry hop, a double dry hop, or whatever it is. It just gets right to the point. And I've always liked that from single cut. When I purchase it, it's very easily found. And boom, right there. You don't have to go searching through the artwork to get it. You get your artwork. Right. You get your you know, your eye candy. And then you get your, your data, which is what I'm looking for as a good craft beer drinker. What is this? What am I drinking? That's what I'd like to know. Mike, you want to know the, uh, the Jedi mind trick there? Uh-oh. You feel on the side of that can? Yeah. Run your fingers over where yes. it's a single cut. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, raised right there. Right, right on that. And right. it does. You In your hand, you're feeling like, like a sweet child. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm a baby. And then it's coming home with you. Yeah, cool. exactly. She adopted it. She's and also baby. the uh, the tank, too. The tank is raised as well. In addition oh, to that. Oh, that's... Uh, Awesome. The, this was on the electric blue. Oh, that, that's what that it is. That is the ghost that's in uh, Mike's house. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I didn't know this the whole I mean, time. Most of us had imaginary friends when we were kids. Mike had poltergeists. That's so right. <laughs> I actually had uh, I had flies. Some things. Thousands of flies appeared in my <laughs> my living room. Never left the living room. I had to kill them all with bug spray. And there's no doubt in my mind that that was definitely. And I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in like that kind of level of stuff. But there was definitely something abnormal in my house at that time. Were you visited by any other plagues in your childhood? No, <laughs> <laughs> no locusts, no, and no. We've uh, been eating frogs for years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good eating. And they, they, so the walls bled once in a while. So. I mean, it adds character. I mean, yeah, I grew up in paint, Amityville, where the Amityville horror took all of the fame. My house would have been nothing <laughs> oh, compared man. to the Amityville horror house. But yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good short story to have the runner-up yeah, um, the haunted run house. <laughs> the, also, the second most haunted house. Also ran. <laughs> I should start. I should start tours. I don't know why I threw the can out. I where where are the horror movies about your child at home? I mean, really, <laughs> um, they're, at, they're still at Blockbuster Video. So go find one first. And oh, that's I where think they that's are. haunted in and of itself. <laughs> in nice. a house where the toilet never flushed. Yeah, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> The downstairs the toilet sink. had a tough time, and the slop oh, sink, sink fell off the. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in my house. I um I but what I had from you know these last few years, in addition to what you guys are still putting out, has always been you know uh, like delicious. I've never been disappointed oh, thanks, by a single beer from you guys. Um, give me a little bit of uh the history of because uh, I I want to find out kind of where the beer started. So what was kind of the first few beers you guys brewed? And then yeah. give us a little bit about where you're at now, because I, I've been following the Instagram over the last few years, and I feel like there's you have more Pokemon to collect than anyone I, I can think of. <laughs> there's so many beers you guys release that I'm like, I got to get that. And then I, you know, it, not all of them reach me. So I get, sure, uh, yeah. I get frustrated and I can't always get into Queens as I should. But yeah, well, the, give, give me a little background on where you guys start on the beer lineup and then right. tell me a little bit about so, today's stuff. Our OGs are still with us for sure. Because our first beers were 18 watt Dean, uh, well, we used to be called 1933 Pilsner, but it's now called Plain Top Pilsner. We changed the name about two years ago mm -hmm. on that particular beer. Um, Jan, which is our kind of like lagered wit beer, those were our OGs. They're still mm -hmm. with us today. I've seen 18 watt uh, a lot. Like that's the one I would get. 18 watts the, is the big guy. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the lead horse for sure. Was um, was double stack part of that? The yeah, beginning? full stack. Yeah, originally. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, f uh, brass tacks for us for full stack. We don't make a goddamn cent when we make full wow. stack. So we make it every now and then for sure. We just can't afford to make it all the time like we yeah. used to. Why is that? It's, it's What's the? Uh... Is it ingredients that hold you back, or is it distribution? Yeah, so, like what's all the? Yeah. So so basically, that's the deal for us. Like it, it was, we kind of made it our our goal. We wanted to be the best on the shelf. That's kind of where we set our our thing at. We said, that's you know, a great thing. We thought so too. We're like, it's like this is something that's um, never going to be totally attainable but it's always something that we can strive towards um trying to be the newest and the coolest 
Um, that's an incredible endeavor. And my, I legitimately tip my hat to like everybody who has a line down the block and is packing people out to buy $22 four packs. There, there's no shade there. That takes an incredible amount of art to make that work for sure. But that's just not what we were after, after a couple of years, you know, for us, it was like, we, we want to be accessible. We want people to be able to find the beer. We want to be able to go to that guy down the street and him have two offerings that he can in good conscience say, Hey, you're going to like these, buy these. Yeah. They're a little bit more expensive, but you're going to get what you pay for. You know, so that was, that was our big goal for us. So, so we used to be churning them out all the time, two or three new beers every single week, um, spreading them out and all that good stuff. But you know, what ends up happening is that you get shops who are really excited. They're big supporters of the brand. They love craft beer. They love the story about craft beer. But you have to have a consumer uh, base in line with that, right? So what ends up happening is maybe they buy three cases of something they should have bought one case of, you know? And so we saw, like, hey, if we're going to put out three beers a week and all of these really supportive, amazing shops are going to buy every single one of those beers all the time, Eventually, somebody's going to end up with that one last four pack that's stuck way in the back that nobody gets to, and they're, they're not going to get the same quality, which we're used to. So we changed it up a little bit about two years ago, and we started making a lot less beers and a lot more of all of them. So it was kind of the best yeah. of both worlds, right? So the beer is still fresh. The beer is still to that shop and on time. But instead of every single person who works at a bottle shop all across the Northeast and now the Midwest <laughs> having to memorize 26 single cut beers, yeah. they only have to remember four of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> And that's a really good way for them to point at it. So our basic MO, aside from COVID, COVID's been its own unique world, right? Mm. Yes. We put out about one special beer like Electric Blue every month. We make a triple batch of it. So we make a lot. So any single cut store across the Midwest and the Northeast who wants that beer, they're going to be able to get it. Ten cases of it? Probably not. But they're going to be able to get a couple. And then upstate, we make the big dogs. So we make Weird and Gilly, 18 Watt, Softly Spoken Magic Spells, Plain Top Pilsner, and then a couple other little side players. And those guys are available 365. You can find them at great grocery stores all across the Northeast. And, and that's been the MO. And frankly, that's been perfect for us. Everybody gets fresh stuff. Everybody gets something new every month. Um, I also do all the social media and all this stuff. So it gives me only one thing I have to talk about. Because, man, <laughs> you got to be like 20 years old to do that shit these days. That yeah. is way too intense. Way too much. It yeah. is a lot. It is a lot. Non-stop, man. 3 a.m. I mean, people with the questions. Oh, with the questions. Oh. Oh. What's the weirdest question you've ever gotten via uh -oh. social media? Oh, nothing interesting, which is the worst. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody. Do you guys have bathrooms? Like, come on. Really? No, no. that's honestly, it's that stuff all yeah. the time. It's, Are you chinchilla-friendly at the brewery? Chinchilla. <laughs> Only chinchillas. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, hey, what time does the, does the tap room in Saratoga County open? You know, uh, look. <laughs> do you, do, now, do you want to respond like, hey, Google probably knows that too. I don't think I need the direct message. That... Yeah, I mean, like, I, I've definitely wanted to throw out that Google leak a few times. <laughs> I mean, Let me Google that I for think you. About it and, and forgive me because I know this is like the most corporate answer you can have. But like, like, we fucking work really hard. I know those people work really fucking hard. And if they took the time to message me, they obviously just didn't think about going to Google. So that's cool. You'll always get a sincere answer, but, I promise. Come on. We all know what the worst question is. Hey, what do you guys have on tap? Oh my God! <laughs> what cans do you have? Hey, right now? You get this whole list with Yo, everything. I gotta write you an SAT like yeah. for that. Like that's nuts, man. What's it's like, hey, just go to the website or go to beermenus.com or go to you know yeah, whatever. That one you'll always get that response from me. Just for like you know for like I, I mean I'm gonna have arthritis at you know 50 <laughs> years old already. I I don't want it, you know. I think the easiest yeah, way want. to I mean do it and most of the breweries are doing it, is just go all through social media and direct them to one place where it all is. So singlecut.com. If you go to singlecut.com, single singlecut.com and they, all, and you know, Sunday, 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 Sunday. $10 gets Single you the whole cut. seat, but you Dot only com. need the edge. <laughs> um, you guys have been doing uh, New York city deliveries um, yeah. for a, a little bit now. When did that start? When, when were you getting excited about that? When did you have enough beer to do that? Right. So, I mean, so here's the kind of the story for all breweries in New York state and some inside baseball here, but for all intents and purposes, a lot of breweries in New York always could have done delivery and always could have direct shipped to consumers, but didn't because of essentially like an, an unspoken pact with the wholesale companies. Correct. Uh, yep. Which is, uh, it's fair. It's business and it's business. You can argue it both ways. Both sides are totally legit. Like a lot of things, COVID really erased the, the rule book. 
So a lot of breweries jumped into it. For us, it's something that we've always wanted to do. And we're just kind of respecting the truce, you know, for all intents and purposes. We have some additional licensing at both of our breweries so we can do that legally and compliance within compliance. Uh, not just during COVID and all of the super cool benefits that the governor's office gave out. Um, not that he needs any more accolades because uh, he's like the, the media darling of 2020. But checking any political affiliations you might have just as a brewer uh, and, uh, and when working for a brewery, the Cuomo administration um, is, yes. is the beloved uh, yes. of all brewers. That's for Over sure. Over the last so many years, he's changed so many laws um, just making it easier to get permits, get licensing. Um, I mean, how many years ago was it where you weren't allowed to have a pint in Crazy. a in in a tasting room and without a tour? It changed, and Nuts. those those are huge for brewers. Huge, totally. And then this year, push bought a whole bunch of stuff before COVID. I mean, so we don't have to pay sales tax on on flights, which is yep. an amazing, really super impactful thing. Yes. To Wait a second, I didn't know that was a thing. It's a thing, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's all about encouraging tourism for out of state. And right. when you have so many roads cutting through New York at all different stages from so many different places. Now, I do I mean, have to say, the Brewers Association, uh, New York State Brewers Association, yes. lobbied for that big time, Paul Leone. Paul Leone, big, big ups forever, PL. <laughs> that, man, that man is the king in my book. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the man for sure. He's got a magic tongue. He knows I mean, how to get stuff done. Not touching that one, but yeah. No, me <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Paul's, yeah, Paul's the man. That's that's for sure. And then uh, and then when COVID hit, you know the the Cuomo administration and Vince Bradley, who was in charge of the SLA, mm -hmm. they got a lot of shit done real quick. You know, so they allowed everybody to take out, including restaurants, which was great. Kept a lot of restaurants on their feet in incredibly difficult times. Um, gave that go ahead for delivery for people who wouldn't have the correct licensing to do it on a temporary basis but have been very, very uh, thoughtful in their extensions of it, which is all great. So for us, delivery is here to stay. Um, it's a huge part of our business. It kept all of our bartenders employed, more or less. Became um, delivery people, right? Us. I mean, pretty much it jumped in their cars and were delivering to doors. And of course, I can't obviously overlook the most important component of this was the consumer base, because not only did people embrace it, accept it, but I, and, and I can't say thank you enough for this, for the months of the end of March and then in April and beginning of May, our deliveries saw about a 20 to 25 percent uh, gratuity average. Wow. Uh, wow. Which, is a, which is a fat tip anyways. But when you think about buying a case of beer, which is going to cost you about 100 bucks, right? Yep. People just dropping 20, 30. We even got a couple hundred dollar tips for our delivery drivers. Oh, that's awesome incredible man and so that's been something we've totally embraced so we deliver to queens seven days a week uh we deliver to manhattan a couple days a week the island yeah. hudson valley brooklyn staten island wherever you are we'll get beer to you it's what's <laughs> kept us going so i mean i'm sure a lot of the people in the local neighborhood in astoria can walk to it so it really it definitely helps and even so if they didn't want to walk during the height of all this didn't want to even go out yeah. of the houses but now, I mean, you still are able to reach people beyond where you could ever reach before. Like I said, Hudson Valley. I mean, who would be coming down? I mean, maybe on vacation, but who would be coming down? But now they can get it delivered right to their door. And it's yeah, easy sure. I mean, low cost compared to what it would cost to take a vacation to come down. Just get it right to where you want it. Yeah, it's great. And I mean, our Hudson Valley guy is another one of our bartenders who can't work right now and instead makes it up by doing these deliveries. I'm not going to uh, sit here and say that it's, you know, apples to apples. Of course, the world yeah. is very different right now. But for a lot of our staff, they've been able to work just as much, hopefully taking home just as much. I don't want to venture into other people's pockets, but I, I think that is the case. Good. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy to say it'll be here for us 365 for forever. Delivery is not going away. And frankly, man, when that couch is feeling right, it's feeling right. <laughs> True. Yeah, we love, have, we love having people to the brewery, but. You know? yeah, yeah. If, if it means me not me being as lazy as I can, we're just getting the doorbell ring, right. answering it on my phone and saying, thank you. You 21? Yep. Bye bye. Thank you. When Netflix is asking you if you're still watching, it's probably a good day to get delivered. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Good, good, good point. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys open now? Uh, New York City or is, or is the, is that considered like. We're not for either though. Right. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're being a little conservative, but that, we think that's the right way to be. Good, yeah. Um, 
as long us, as it's not yeah. hurting business, you're not going to truly, you know, suffer even more of a step down than where you're already at. Right. I think yeah. you might as well. Why? I mean, if you're if you're treading water, then continue treading. If you see any trends in any direction, then you can make the appropriate changes with the phases the way they are. Yeah, but, that's that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, yeah. it's like you know, if, if you're in straits where you need to be open right now, regardless, hell or high water, you got to be open. Right. right. You're going to go out of business. Your family isn't going to be eaten if you're not open. Then that is what it is. You know what I mean? That's a that's an uh, an assumed risk that your consumers take. Uh, it's an assumed risk that your employees take and you take. Uh, I, I we support that 100 for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, go get them. Just we're we're blessed that we have other revenue lines because sure. we're very we're a unique business. You know we, you know we 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 distribute nine out of ten cans. You know one out of ten of them we sell in our tap room. So for us, huh. we have other means of keeping the lights on um, as it stands right now. So very I, fortunate. I That's good. It's incredibly fortunate. Yeah. So by no means do we begrudge anybody who's open right now at all. It's just we're we're privileged enough to be able to get to make that call to to be a little conservative. So we're, we're choosing to do that. So uh, for New York City, we probably won't have that tap room open in any recognizable form to like what it used to be until after Labor Day at least. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking more even maybe more into like October range. Okay. Uh, and then for Upstate, um, we were actually ready to open up a beer big beer garden about a week ago, um, but they've kind of had their first kind of sightings of maybe there's a little bit of a spike again. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe spike is too dramatic of a word, but trending the, the direction nobody wants to see it. So uh, we went ahead and postponed that as well. That'll be kind of a, a Labor Day or after endeavor. But and, and you guys did that on your own. Yeah, that was that was our decision for okay. sure. Um, and and I mean our truly. I mean, it's an incredible, diff incredibly difficult time. I mean, there's so much information coming from so many directions, uh, for sure. Especially in the early and days. And oftentimes it's conflicting. Uh, not even touching that one, man. That's, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, we, we could spend about three, four, or five hours on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not even getting into that one. But we, uh, in March, you know, we, uh, the week before the shutdowns happened, we had some staff members who have a ton of ownership in our brewery. You know, that's that's something that we really like to foster. We always tell folks, very cool. If if you're doing your job, somebody should think you're the owner at some point. You know, <laughs> super rich, you know. Yeah. And um, they frankly gave it to me. I mean, they really laid into me. So they're like, there's no reason we should be open this weekend. We should be closing. And this is, you know, a week before St. any bar Day. closures were announced. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, for us, we're still a New York City business, New York City based business. You know, the hustle is it's in your blood. You know, you don't you don't say no to things. And no, they laid in and they didn't let up. And it, I took it, you know. The, the only way I could, I mean, it was, it was, it was done with the best, uh, with the best of intentions and they were totally right. You know, so it was nice to get to be a week later after we'd been closed for a week, get a talk with them and just be like, yo, see, you know, <laughs> thank you for, yeah. uh, for being so intense. You know, you were, you were totally right. Uh, I, you know, we got a million things going on. We were waiting for the state to say to close, but yeah, we were ready. Close early, be safe, better than sorry. And you know, oh, yeah. the flip side of that is, Definitely. you know, our staff has been, you know, 99% healthy, which good. is great. Can't ask yeah. for more than that. Just about to ask everyone good uh, in the brewery family. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We had one associate who was sick, but uh, was out a week before and took a full month off just to be triple safe. And we let him work from home. And cool. Yeah, that worked out great. And frankly, we've needed all hands on deck. I'm sure you've heard this from other people, but yeah. Yeah. yeah breweries have, uh, have been struggling to keep up for sure. Um, People are drinking a lot more. Uh, and so you home. you have a no, big no, distribution reach at this point. You said you have your own candy line now. I want to talk a little bit about that. But, I mean, you mentioned the Midwest as being part of your distribution. So mm -hmm. how did that evolve? Because you typically you think maybe East Coast, up and down the Northeast would be the direction. Right. But you went kind of right across the top there. So tell us what the yeah. uh, the thought process is with that. And, and who are you using as a distributor? And what markets are you in? Right. Yeah. So we, we've got a pretty big swath now. Um, we, we, we try and keep it a little close to the vest just because it's like, you know, it's the nitty gritty, but it's um, for us, it gives us more guests to interact with and, you know, more people to share our beer with. Yeah. Um, our distribution footprint's pretty wide now. Uh, we go from Maine down to Virginia as far as East Coast wow. goes. Uh, the one hole being Delaware, but that'll be the next on the, uh, the Delaware list. is a hole for everybody. It's just a, yeah. it's a hole it a, in it general. It is a hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go to go to Rita? Jopa, yeah. <laughs> so I got Everyone's I got a quick. Joke. I'll, I'll interject really quick. I went to Del. I went to school down in Maryland. 
um, and my buddy lived in Delaware, um, and we went to his house for the weekend uh, after, I guess, the first semester. And as I'm driving through from Maryland to Delaware, I'm just driving. It's a big open area. There was a place called Bob's Old Beds. So let me tell you what Bob's <laughs> Old Beds is. It is a. Please tell me it's exactly okay. what it sounds like. It is. Please. Have you Please. ever seen wow. cattle grazing in a field? Replace the cattle with old rusty beds, and that's what Bob's Old Beds was. It was a like an antique like store. No, no, no. Bed frames, metal right. rusted bed frames, all in a field for he, miles. He'd get your your head in the gutter with the old pea stain. No, no, no. no. The, the, I mean, those I'm, mattresses I'm just wouldn't. As confused. No, those yeah, mattresses. Well, that doesn't offer any clarity. And there is Delaware in a nutshell. <laughs> I mean, as, as the the time Come I on. spent in Delaware. I, my, listen. Daughter goes, my daughter goes to school in Delaware. Well, I listen, I, I like Rehoboth Beach. I like myself a little dogfish now and then, too. I mean, there's, there's nice places, but once you get off the shore, there's nothing but Bob's Old Beds everywhere you go. It's just ridiculous. It's Cumberland odd. Farms as far as yeah, that that's it. <laughs> Where do you think Harold and Kumar ended up? I mean, that's where they are. They're still stuck out there in the wilderness in Delaware. Wow, it's, yeah, crazy. it's crazy how rural that state is. It's, it is. It's just farmland, isn't it? It's Once weird. you get out of the, the shores or away from water in the middle of it and in the outskirts, forget it. It's just nothing but cows and beds. It's, it's... There's 47 angry Delawareans all coming for us right now. <laughs> They're God, on I Facebook so. already. Uh, I really hope so. I live yeah, in Once Delaware. they drive the four miles back to the main highway, they're going to be up here in five hours. They're going to be coming At for least us. At least with a bunch of old beds. And, uh, <laughs> They're gonna leave it on all of our front doors. No, I don't like, want any more Bob's old beds. I um, I I, I, I agree with you. Delaware, Delaware. I, I guess state. Delaware. I don't care as much about. Um, but you, the reach to Virginia is surprising because I don't yeah, know if I knew that. I thought it was only kind of like you know Maryland area, but you go far, pretty south. That's good. Yeah, uh, Mar- yeah, Virginia is actually coming up for us. So the first beers have not been drunk quite yet, but they will be for Labor Day this year. Um, and then we go out as far west as uh, Chicago. At the <laughs> yes, model it's or? it's hot, man. It, you know, <laughs> I mean, you got to go where the money is. And... You got to remember, you know, a, a new customer costs you three dollars, <laughs> uh, but an old customer costs you nothing when you sell meth. Yes. <laughs> so just think about that. Well, I mean, yes, yeah, there's meth, but what's my old saying, guys? Bath's also for babies. You know the drugs unless. <laughs> Crack is free. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you get them, Steve. That's how you get advice on this podcast, you guys. Yes, it is. We are uh, comprehensive. We really try to be educational. We're we're all parents here, so it's important. <laughs> I uh, works here for the kids. Yes, this is a kid show. Well, it's for the kids. Uh, yeah, tell, can you uh, give us a little rundown here on um, Electric Blue? Because um, this was the oh, first yeah. one I had. I like I said, um, one of my favorites is the Weird and Gilly. I've had it a few times now, right? And it's like the go-to for me for from you guys now. Electric View was a little different, that and, right there, one, no. and that one's very good too. Well, that's what oh, my yeah. crowler was, by the way, of oh, softly spoken magic spells, and that got me messed up the other day. Um, so Electric <laughs> Blue and Weird and Gilly are actually very similar genetically, right? Because I would Im- imagine if you're looking at right. the, there you go. they obviously did it. Mm. To kind of well, make sense for all the other. music nerds listening to the word right now. Yes, is it a Bowie beer? Bowie, Bowie series. Yes, Bowie beer. yes. We're to right. it, man. So we got four Bowie beers. the The smallest one is Some Cat from Japan. Ah, which, yes. which just just came out this week. I was just yeah. gonna say, you guys are just releasing it. Just released it. Yeah, four point two percent version of all those. So we call it our DDH Mini IPA. So it's the uh, you know it's for the it's for the Hayes boys in tank tops. That's how I like to <laughs> they got, how I like to phrase that. They have the lover boy tank tops. That's what they have to have. But oh all, shit! All Hayes boys like me aren't wearing tank tops. So. <laughs> Black t-shirts for life. Black t-shirt yes. mafia forever. I'm with oh, you. So you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, I, I've actually I've done well. Like I said, COVID. I can pull well. off a tank top. Me yeah. for sure. No. I did. I I pulled um, it off at one live oh, show doing, at Hexer. Any my stuff. You're getting better, Steve. Everyone's getting a little bad. Everyone's you kinda... have lost a lot of. It's it's embarrassing how Steve was lost one for you. No, no, I know how how uh, 
how more you guys care about your health and well-being than I do. <laughs> <laughs> you just I, I don't trivial. really. You don't care about your life anymore. I don't. Oh, my <laughs> God. Nail on the head. That's you really don't care. If, if history is any guide, I'll probably, once he starts going to preschool, I'll concern myself with myself again. <laughs> right uh, now, throw it all maybe out the I'll window. bend that curve of Yes, you're going to flatten the curve? Too young. <laughs> flatten the so, curve. Flatten the curve, Pete. You got it. Yeah. So, it's actually you know the target just, age. Right, yeah. He's he's about five months old now, so we're, we're trending oh my on, God. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's dying he's, he's, at like 65 to 67 range. <laughs> but I'm hoping by the time he turns three, maybe we're back up into like the 75. There you go. <laughs> you want to enjoy at least five I mean, or six years of, of retirement. Come on. Without going to the hospital every two we'll, days. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, you'll be fine. I don't know. You'll, you'll, you'll turn <laughs> it around. <laughs> You'll be all right. You're gonna turn it around. Yeah, turn it around. You'll be good. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, you go, Dan. And you have to support matters. it, Dan. Dan believes in you. Yeah, that's all that matters. Not to get off the weeds. So I start. I, I got bored. Like cereal is a very common breakfast food for me, and I just got bored having cereal. So then I put uh, so beer that, in it. And, so uh, then I started having like just like uh, sautéed like ground chicken and steamed vegetables. I'm like, oh, it's sort of different. It's pretty healthy, right? Very healthy breakfast. And then you would be surprised, like how steep the downturn in in health and nutrition I take by the like, rest of the day <laughs> when work and the kids have just beaten me <laughs> mentally into a pulp, where like I've eaten a half a bag of Doritos after <laughs> starting really strong with that breakfast, and then it's you know, you know, some say that bag was half empty, but I'd say right. it's still half full. Yes, <laughs> think about and that. You still have work to do. <laughs> That's self control right that, there. Right there, bro. Right there. Are we talking I, I, Cool Ranch? Or are we talking uh, that that uh, hot whatever that chili? I do like the hot nacho, but uh, yeah. oh, then yeah. the, the the kids are around, so then I got I got to keep it. Uh, it's the regular ones. Nacho cheese. Uh, yeah, just the regular original Doritos. So I grew up in San Diego, and I've been told this is maybe regional. But did you guys have the salsa verde Doritos? No, no. Does that ring any bells? I, say I do out. enjoy salsa verde. But... Missed out, man. Jesus. Mm. I know there was, still a thing? there was all these campaigns that Doritos were doing over the years for like those new flavors. I feel like I've seen it. I don't definitely There's haven't the had green it. one. There was the blue one, the red one, and the green one growing really? up. Really? Is it still around? I, w- I don't know. I assume so. I hope so. It was definitely the best. You would hope God, so. Now I want to make salsa verde. It was basically <laughs> just like, it was just the cooler ranch with like chili powder in it. It was nice. pretty good. Hmm. Pretty solid. Well, they make that, 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 uh, it's chili something, whatever it's called. It's a purple bag now. Oh, that's like the sweet chili. Oh, yeah, right? sweet, sweet chili. chili. That's, yes, thank you. That's tasty. That one I like. It's addicting because the heat isn't overbearing, right. and you just keep going. You're like, yes, more heat, more heat, more heat. And it doesn't turn it up. It just kind of levels off. It's nice. But I want my snacks being sweet. I want them to be, to be spicy, vicious. savory, old, and sloppy in the face. And... <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I want I want salt and fat. You know, Yo. Bingo. get that get Bingo. that sugar right out of here. <laughs> one I of found the... a place up in Rhode Island that. Actually, I'm going on vacation next week, and the place is called Duck Fat. There you go. There's one of those in Portland, Maine. Chain, you think? It's another one. Hmm. Duck Fat. I mean, everything they make. Duck is- Fat milk. Oh, yeah. Shakes, There's one French in Portland. I've been to that. Yes, yeah. I've been there, too. Yeah, That's my right. wife and yeah. I went there a few years ago. Well, well poutine, oh. duck fat. Um, yeah. There you go. <laughs> if you All want, if you want to bring your tub of duck fat home, Pete. There we go. Oh, don't tempt me! You can, don't. You can have it for breakfast. With- Is that You're your all in at this tier? point. Animal fat. What's what's your what's your go to? Mm. I'm gonna cook something in this fat. I mean, mm. oh, uh, yeah. Pretty boring. Uh, every now and then, if, like I make if I make bacon, and then I get the urge, like I'll keep Classic. the bacon fat in the pan and yeah. cook Brussels sprouts in set bacon. Go. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's about as other than that. No, it's just. Now, uh, I'll, very I'll Italian uh, olive oil fan. So I will make bacon, and then I will make French toast in the bacon grease. Oh, that's hard. That's interesting. Hmm. It's, and it's, then you got the maple syrup, which I usually put on the bacon anyway. Going on the French toast. Now you're talking. Saves you a trip. Oh wow! Yeah, look at that. One mm. bite. Actually, actually, just recently, I treated everyone, and I did uh, brown sugar or, or candied bacon. Um, it was my daughter's uh, birthday, so I. Rub the bacon down, thick cut bacon with with uh, brown sugar, and 
I tried to make that at home one time. Did not come out that well. I got to feel like I need to take another crack at that. You got a pan Candy full of sugar. Fucking delicious. Oh. It's it's crack, but no. Speaking of delicious, uh, Dan, I wanted to just quickly get the, the differences here on electric blue oh, yeah. first. We, we we're gilly. That <laughs> no, it's okay. We, Back to beer. That's the way we went to it. No, I'm Let's serious talk though. More like more about animal fats, you yeah. guys. <laughs> How much animal fat really is in these two beers? Uh, this I'm is voting this beer. not vegan. Okay. Are these beers? <laughs> We're talking about nothing but animal fats yes. for the next two hours. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Welcome to the animal fat hour. In hour three, we'll You're be going to vegetable fats. Food. We've got Steve on line three. Steve, deer fat for real? <laughs> Tell us more. Deer fat. Thanks for taking my call, Daniel. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm talking a little bit about the. Uh, I really uh, like the ham fat. The ham fat's delicious. And then I uh, uh, Steve, I can't hear you. Can you try dialing with less fat fingers? Yes, yes. For, the, for the crossover episode with uh, our Spotify uh, cohort, Joe Rogan, mm. we'll do elk fat. <laughs> yes, yeah, elk we're, fat. We're Not very <laughs> fatty, though. Very lean meat, that elk. I assume it is. Um, no, I guess what I was going with is Electric Blue and, electric blue and Weird Gilly. Right. Um, they definitely have distinct tastes. But yet they probably still have the same base, right? So, so, so we like to do that a lot. We have a lot of we have a lot of beers that are kind of like uh, yin yang is maybe like a little bit too dramatic, but they're like uh, we call them like sister pairs, mm. where it's like they've got a lot of similar genetics, but we take them in very very different directions. So, not to get too nerdy about it, but that usually comes down to like fermentation temperature and duration, ah, uh, dry hopping rate, knee strain time, or something for sure. It's incredible. You can use the, have the exact same recipe, but if you let one have a slightly different gravity, a final gravity than the other, one be a little sweeter than the other, they can be completely different beers, mm. which you can be blindfolded and blind taste test, and 10 out of 10 times you'll say, oh, those are totally different. Sure. Even though there's 100% of the same raw ingredient. We're big believers in that. Like, Not to get too romantic about it, but... The beer is a composite of a myriad of factors, thousands of factors that go into it, which is one of the big reasons, actually, for one of the criticisms we hear a lot about our brand is we don't talk about our hops. We don't say what hops are in things. And our big takeaway for yes. that, yes, yeah, we never do. And the reason for that is a, a couple things. A, there's no such thing as a hop flavor. Uh, a hop is an ingredient which gets interpreted through a myriad of different factors before you hear it. You know, it's a note. Oil duration and temperature along with the, how it plays with the malt bill. And... Totally. And that's just the factors that we control. That's not even getting into the factors, the the, the infinitely grander factors of, that went into making it what it is before it even got to our dock. Um, you know, a, we had a recent uh, issue with that where we don't do featured hop beers. None of our beers have one hop or ha even have three hops with one being the big thing. They're all big community efforts by big blends of hops that we're constantly adjusting and reassessing all the time because there's terroir. So you guys are on the island, wine country, you, you know what it's about. How much moisture, what kind of oh, soil content, how I much light are you getting? All the time. Yeah. Just depending right. on the year, temperature, every, uh, uh, a grape will change and then that wine's different. It's the same thing with, with, with beer. 100%. Your malt, a depends on how many carbohydrates, what's the protein ratio, what was the moisture, and then that's just grain. Now you're looking at everything else, different hops you're putting in. What? How was the year? Was it dry? Was it a bad year? Was it a good year? Was it a? It's it, the one thing I was told by um, when, when I was at Seibel. It's mm -hmm. lucky we can make the same beer again and again, uh. just from the variables that that right. we have. Yeah, and it's like, you know, uh, brewers, we, we often, we kind of worship Anheuser-Busch, which is a weird thing to say. Nobody expects brewers to say that, but... but the level the, of consistency. Right. Totally. It's through the roof. And, and there's a million metrics you can use. Uh, one of the big things that we've done, which has really allowed us to, to continuously grow over the years, which is a very unsexy thing, is, yeah, we go out to Yakima and we pick all of our hops by hand, for sure. That's super, super important. Nice. Hmm. But the that sounds like a fun weekend is our full-time quality control and quality assurance director who just sits in a lab every day. And all she does is she just does boring ass tests on our beers over and over and over and over sure. again. And it's as best as she can make sure that what electric blue this week is the same, this month is the same as it was 
totally. six months ago. Right? Because that's the only way you get any form of consistency is having measurable metrics. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to have maximum consistency, like you know Anheuser Busch does, then you blend. That's the only way they can do that. You have to you okay. know limit the the margin of error because every single batch is going to be unique. And we decided years ago for us, it was like, we can either hide from the truth of that or we can embrace it. So we get asked all the time, like on social media, it's like, oh, you said this is a particularly good batch. Does that mean the last batch was shitty? But like, no, the last batch was great too. And this is like a totally unique thing. Like there's way more pineapple in this batch than the last one. People right. are like, oh, did you add? Because it rained an extra day where the hops came from Amarillo? that week. Yeah, bro, it's all El Dorado <laughs> hops, man. Now, I mean, like, no, no, it's it was just one like, variable hey, of the climate in right. in October or whatever, or May, March, whatever it is, or just those little yeast cells were just super yes. happy that day, and they yep. were just chomping away, and they loved everything that those hops had to say to them, and that's how you end up with great beer, you know, and that's um, so that's what it's about. It's kind of what makes craft beer awesome and super special too. Is that no matter how much effort science money you put into it there's always a little bit of a craft and either you can embrace Luck. that and yeah. try and do the best you possibly can with it or you can you know try and uh control nature which is what ab InBev does and they do a really good job at it you know um, their business practices are horrendous and you know, <laughs> i'll never say a kind word about that but wait what wait you're no, breaking yeah, new ground no here rob probably no shock on the word but you know what oh. i'm saying you know what i mean dan For what um the qac qc they're doing their job what uh what are they doing i know you said they did weird and gilly up up in uh up in the capital region what what else are the other ones that are coming out of there and uh, talk to me a little bit about how you guys share that distribution from those two breweries so if you're doing a big batch up there is it is it mm-hmm. trucked down and then distributed or does it go right from there how's that all work no oh man you're this is the uh the meat and potatoes question here <laughs> yes. uh, no, one of the reasons why we chose that location so specifically, not only did we love the the place. Um, Who was it beforehand? It was Schmaltz Brewing. It was Schmaltz. Yes. Schmaltz. Yeah, it was Schmaltz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were a pretty classic brewery. They've been open for about 25 years, uh, but they'd always been a contract brewery. Yep. Mm. Uh, and then in 2012 uh, or 13, one of those years, mm. Uh, they built a huge brewery up in Clifton Park and started not just producing their own beers, but started contracting for a whole bunch of other sure. uh, breweries too. I it's a very big facility. Coney Island and they uh, did, and they sold Coney Island to yes. Boston Beer Company. Right, Sam Adams. Right, and that was right before the brewery opened. So I'm sure that those were connected in some way. I don't know about. Um, yeah, so when we took over the facility, one of the big perks for us is, you know, we know, hey, nine out of 10 of our dollars that go into our pocket come from distribution, so we should make this as easy as possible. So that brewery is pretty much right on the axis of the I-87 and the I-90. Okay. So we basically have the corridor connecting New York City to Montreal and then connecting Boston pretty much as far as you can go. And West, just keep going. So it worked out great for us because we had really been focusing on the, uh, on the Great Lakes region as we moved outwards, which has been a focus for us. I've been to Cleveland, you know, a million times in the last few years, um, which is dope. But that was not a setup for a joke. That's a, that's a great city. So is Buffalo. So is Pittsburgh. <laughs> I get that a lot. I big, mean, big LeBron fan, uh, you know, when the King speaks, I, that's I listen. Right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then, uh, so that worked out perfectly for us. So basically we can get beer from our brewery to Pennsylvania, which is, our second biggest market in really? a couple hours. Huh. I see. I would have yeah. I would have pegged it as more like Massachusetts or it's not, Connecticut. That's a, that's a close number three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's Massachusetts. Hmm. Uh Connecticut's great too. It's just it's just smaller, like all things right. considered, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, mean, I know I've had single cut in Boston. I remember being in oh shit. The old reliable. Let's go. Bring it on. 18 wide. So I Boston city wise, that's our second biggest city. We spent a lot of time in Boston. Cool. And we love it up there too. Well, you know, it's nice to love everywhere when you travel on a company. <laughs> right. that's, a, that's a really nice way. This to place is beautiful. Look at my you hotel know? overlooking the Charleston River. It's beautiful. That's right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> overlooking the parking lot outside <laughs> of the airport at the oh, Holiday just, Inn. This is at beautiful. The Inn with the crack whore in the car. Oh wow. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> I, thought a, I thought this she's, was. A she's she's wicked show. scary. <laughs> wicked scary. It's wicked scary. 
so yeah, so logistically, it just worked out really, really well for us. Um, we're uh, uh, Rich lived in Canada for almost 20 years. Really? Uh, my, my whole family, aside from myself and my siblings, are Canadian. So we have, we've got a bunch of uh, huh. a bunch of Canadian blood in the brewery. That's why I know uh, what Quebecois is. Got that's it. That's right. There you go. <laughs> just, just I mean, I get on the eighty-seven. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Super easy, man. Um, so that's kind of like the next uh, the next place to conquer for us, which is really cool. Um, unfortunately, Canada is um, uh, very free and easy with like their civil liberties and their way of life. Extremely controlling when it comes to alcohol, which is a little inconvenient. But otherwise, uh, that that'll be next for us, and that's kind of a big perk. Yeah, of and so that's in the Great White North. That's where that's I was going right. with it because they, they have a lot of. We've actually talked to a few uh, breweries up there. We've had a couple call into the show. Right. Um, last year, we were on this like the Canadian kick, and I was you know DMing people and asking them to call into the show, and they did. I, they actually called in. We're talking about it. What is the biggest hurdle to co- overcome to get distribution up north? Oh, it's a hundred percent the province. Yeah. Um, so obviously, the the two big ones that anybody in the East Coast are interested on it or interested in is is Montreal and Ontario. Right. Um, Ontario has like a very straightforward process, but it's there's just a lot of like levels and tiers, and there's like a lot of very intense uh, waiting periods and verification periods. Um, I can't fault any of those things. the The intent is all good behind all of that. You know what I mean? But it's 2020. Uh, we have computers. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> we don't have to fax things anymore. No dittos need to be printed. You know, a, a big brewery is going to deliver a safe product. Um, you know, uh, I would say 99 out of 100 times, but that's way too little. I mean, it's 999 billion out of a trillion times, right. you know. Have but you I guys, appreciate that. Have you guys so seen- none of your cans have made anyone blind so far. So just, just, just me on Saturdays. Yeah, they, <laughs> in the bushes. Yeah. Uh, have you guys thought about going across the pond? Going going yeah. over? Uh, because I know uh, I've spoken to a few breweries uh, that, you know, over over in Europe, they l- now love the American IPA. Like They sure do. I so mean, we're they in, can't get enough of it. They can't get enough of it. We distro in the UK. Um, and wow. that's nice. going to be stepping up a lot in 2021 with with some super cool news that it's not shareable yet, but the, the, the second or 15th time I'm back on the word, I'll share it with you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, AKA the second. We've been in uh, Sweden for quite a while, actually, which oh, really? is great. What, what about Japan? Because Japan, and, you know, is... And, and Japan. Yep. You, yes, you no, nailed I have, I have, those are all of our markets. I have mm-hmm. a couple of friends that live in Japan, and they said the the craft market for, for our USA beers is... They, it's it's like here in, in the states where how we have shippers and you have all these different clubs that right. are trying to share. Japan is the same way. They can't wait to get their hands on American IPAs. They, so they so we through. launched uh, Japan in late, or I'm sorry, in uh, in early 2019, um, and we actually did a really special beer just for the Japanese market that we called Big in Japan, um, hmm. which is a uh, is like a every beer we do is a musical reference. That one's like a four-way one it's it's kind of a tom waits reference but it's also Ooh, this, re- this reference to this super cool project we did um we um uh, we have we share some family with an ad agency in toronto called zulu alpha kilo or just zulu for short um and they're like very much the cool kids of canadian marketing hmm. um they approached us with this idea of like hey we have this super cool idea um for a, a for a beer launch do you have any, you know, upcoming things? And we said, oh, hey, like we just launched Japan. And it just so happens last year in April, uh, the emperor of Japan abdicated. Um, so his son became the new emperor, which yep. is the first time an abdication had happened in like 60 years. So it was declared like a national holiday for a full month. So we're like, hey, what a great way to launch the Kick product. We're going to have the entire population of Japan just partying for 30 days. So... We thought, like, what's what is like super rock and roll about Japan? And when you really get into it, so many things are rock and roll about Japan. Um, we thought one of the secret things that the the Japanese music lovers have given American audiences and British audiences that we always take for granted is that they save a bunch of our most beloved classic rock bands from the dustbin yes. because they were adopted in Japan. 
Then they took that momentum and brought them back to the States in the UK. Um, so we decided to come up with this project called Big in Japan, where each four pack of this beer, which was this delicious double dry hopped IPA, um, very similar to Weird and Gilly in its DNA, but it oh, had yeah. some of our proprietary hop oils in it, which are awesome. We used some of our super, super limited uh, Nelson Savant hop oils in that particular nice. beer. Um, the hop oils are great because um, the first week the yield. beer comes out, they get, yeah, oh, the yield's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And then they've got a really long shelf life on them. So oh. they can taste a little green for the first week or two. But man, taste one of those beers two or three months old, and you would never know that it was right. it was more than a couple weeks out of the tank. Hmm. Well, that's great for overseas delivery. Perfect, right? right. Yeah. So we devised this beer, and then we created four labels. And by we, I mean Zulu. They did all of the, the heavy creative lifting. So it was four unique kind of visual puzzles uh, that all told the story of this one band that made it big in Japan. Hmm. But hidden inside of the image, the whole image was actually a QR code which we kind of take for granted in the U S but in Japan and Korea is still huge. It's yeah, everything. everyday usage for sure. So you would pick up this four pack at the store and it said in Japanese, basically like name the tune. Um, and then you'd kind of look at it. And if you couldn't figure it out, you'd scan your phone and it would take you to a private Spotify playlist that was built all about that artist. And then all of the bands they inspired. So basically here's all the music that happened. Because this one band was big in Japan. That's freaking awesome. Who is that, by the way? So, well, we did four different beers, uh, or four different labels. So, we did one that was The Runaways. Ah, so great band. I mean, really, like, helped define what the mm -hmm. punk rock sound would be, really put alternative rock on a course it never would be. By the way, Frankly, did you, a lot of... Did you, uh, did you hear the, the start of our intro? Did, I saw your face light up. Do you know who yeah. that is? Oh, uh, there was a there was a bunch in there. That was a thick that was a thick reference pool. Um, yeah, there's a lot in there, but it starts off with uh, No Effects, which is one of my favorite oh, bands go. dating back to you know 1989 or something like that when their first album came out. That's and Fat that's Mike, right? Fat yeah, Mike? Fat Mike. Yeah, he knows his way around a car. But I like a that bit, guy. A little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, for for punk, I'm a huge punk rock fan. I mean, going back oh, to yeah. early Sex Pistols and and. Bad religion and and even like face to face and just random oh, stuff yeah. and up into the, the current era of punk rock, to me all of that is sacred. And the Runaways are one of those bands, you know, just Dude, one of those sure. things you got to have on repeat or in a, a playlist, like you said. And we're Queens kids, so if you don't like punk rock, that means you don't like Queens. Yeah, what the you fuck? Know what I mean, you heard the Beastie Boys in there too for their. Uh, That's right, and Fo High for Life, man, remains <laughs> forever. Yeah. You know? And listen, they were a punk rock band before they became the rap icons. They played instruments. They were, to me, punk rock to me. It's just one of the iconic moments of music history growing up in the uh, mid-'80s. So, I mean, it's thick, you know, and, and it's an international conversation. Like, yeah. music takes off based off of, like, who gives it love and vouches for it. And thank God, like, all of our Japanese homies over there, like, were really, like, you know, picking up on something that we, we missed. And there was a couple more in there. Uh, Deep Purple was a big one. Mm. Queen, actually, was another one. Really didn't hit it until they went to Japan and got huge. And then for the U.S., as far as like single cut and our classic rock motif goes, it's, it's Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick was just a down and out, burned out band. Went uh, to Japan, blew up, you know, Budokan. playing the Buda, Budokan like year two. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so we sent that over there. So so Japan's been great for us since then. and um, That's awesome. Yeah, we do a little bit in Korea too. And then, uh, some, you know, some sporadic stuff all over, but. Those are those very are international. Yeah. That's great to hear, man. I know. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was funny. I was hoping you guys did something like that. I did not know, but that's really great to hear because I know those, you know, those are audiences that a lot of brewers will never touch. And you guys are already putting out a great product. So um, we used to, the United States used to be looked down upon. Right. You, know, like, yeah. you don't know how to brew beer. You guys. Especially you guys, in Europe. You guys suck. And then now everybody wants to be from the U.S. And that's great to see. Isn't it crazy, man? What a weird, what a weird thing. It's it just flip flop, you know. It was, uh, you know, it was Ben Huskaboot, you know. Oh, nobody can brew anything like a German <laughs> right. can because true. It's it's what you know, the attitude is. Do you think if Michael Jackson was with us today, he would be oh, like so my... happy, or would he be pissed off that we're selling thousands and thousands of gallons of beer that looks like that? I think he'd be pissed off. Yeah, I think he'd be pissed <laughs> off too. Oh man, oh man.
I think he would be really pissed off. Like, that's not real beer. Holy crap. Now I'm glad I'm dead. <laughs> well, I, I got to uh, tell you, Michael, cheers to you for, for forever and ever. But yeah, man. It, it works, man. It works. I'll tell you that. I like it. Uh, we interviewed Bobby from uh, Barrier brewing company um, oh yeah bobby i love that dude. bobby's like, He's awesome man fucking one of those guys we i honestly don't remember the show so much shit happened that night it was ridiculous so um he talked a lot about you know international distribution he mm -hmm. went over to europe a bunch of times and just he was sent out there to make friends and to share beer and then from that a lot of the the barrier um main uh let's say core beers are now sold like money goes international right um and some of the other core beers go international over to europe because same thing like you said you know they have their their standard beers that they brew and drink over there to get an american ipa is like what we went through 10 years ago you know like oh my god what the fuck oh, is yeah. this thing this is amazing so they're starting to go through their renaissance over there and so their breweries can't catch up with what right. we're already putting out, it's going to take them years to get there. So why not take advantage of it now? So, I mean, uh, one that Steve's going to chuckle at, but when we went over it for the first time, we, you know, we went to Sweden a couple of years ago and kind of launched it and had a fantastic time and had some really, really great beers, but um, kind of an inside baseball thing. None of the breweries had serious glycol systems. Mm. So like they didn't really have refrigeration in the same magnitude that we do in the U S right, right. so the beer was really tasty, but you know, somebody would give you an amazing dry hop Saison. that was just like, yo, this is delicious. You guys have done a great job with this. And they're like, Oh yeah, that's my favorite IPA we make. And be like, Oh no, that's not an IPA, bro. No, that's not even close. Like, I mean, this is a delicious beer, but you got to call it something else. Yeah, Are you calling this an IPA? Like, oh, yeah, it's an IPA. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, Steve made, oh, it's not. We, Pete and I talk about it all the time. Pete, uh, and I had what Steve made, which was called Lager of Sin. So it was an IPL, in a mm. sense. So the problem was it was called a lager. But it really was a one of the most delicious IPAs, IPLs, whatever you want to call it, that we've ever had. It was, bar none, something that I couldn't get enough of. I would continually go, when it was out, buy it. But the problem is, some people are looking just at just calling it a lager. Right, it become becomes a problem. That the the first time we had Steve on, uh, I think it was like the second brewer we had on, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I had not been a huge IPA fan. Uh, you know those West Coast super bitter piney ones. Just I, I can never really get into those. And we had Steve on, and we we had an IPL which I hadn't had before. And just opened it up for me as far as like what, you know. It was dank. It was it was juice. Bad it was fantastic. everything that you would want off of. I'm beer. really not okay, I think was the was that particular <laughs> one, but uh Lager is Sin. Yeah. So goddamn good. Yeah. And I I guess when you go overseas and they think an IPA is gonna be their Saison base with an overhopped adjunct, right, yeah. you know, dry is it the, whirlpool. The climate whatever. That they don't do refrigeration because I, ma I imagine Sweden has some colder months than we have here typically. Yeah, I really don't know. And obviously, I'm majorly generalizing, right? I didn't go to every sure. single brewery <laughs> or whatever. You didn't do your but fact I, checking, sir. But it was, I did not, no. <laughs> um, but it did seem to be kind of a, a reoccurring trend. It was just like, oh, here's like really great beer. It's just, it's it's missing some in, like incredibly vital components to be this thing. Uh, that which they're you, calling it. You're trying to, yeah, trying to make it. And frankly, like, I kind of dig that. I think that's great because yeah. we have 8,000 breweries in the U.S. So if Sweden just wants to drink our IPA, that's great. We have more than enough for them. <laughs> and I would frankly love to drink some more of that hoppy, hoppy saison, saison yeah. that they were calling IPA. Here, it was a delicious product. It was just, you know, sometimes the meat and the marketing don't always, you know, sure. match up. As well, all. I think that's what they didn't know what to, to call it. So they're trying to market it as something that people can get that mirrors what we're doing yeah. over here. But they still know they're good. It wasn't a bad product, like you said, but yeah. delicious. And the other flip side is for, for every other country and culture besides the U.S. who want to make great IPAs and they're wondering why their IPAs aren't as good is because they're probably still under the fictitious notion that they're supposed to make money when they brew IPAs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just not going to happen. It doesn't happen in the U.S. That's nope. No. So, 
So you got to check your European sensibilities uh, or your Canadian calm when you're like, oh, well, I don't think that beer is going to make us any money. It's like, you're right. It's not. So. There's no benefits in the conversion factor of euros. It's to, not really uh, not clicking. No. Shucks. So that's that's the number one. So close. For sure. Fiddlesticks, Carl. Fiddlesticks. Right. And if you can't move a lot of those uh, beers out of your brewery you right. know that's that's another strike against so and so i think that's again, the biggest thing the state kind of yeah what you guys are doing is you're moving volume you guys are, are pushing like you said the the core beer is not a huge amount of variety but like a good amount of variety but massive quantity i think that's what really has truly defined your brewery at this point because now i oh, see the you. same ones on the shelf uh electric blue as being a relatively um not not seasonal, but you know what I'm saying. The only brew it every so yeah. often, but Weird and Gilly, I, I've seen a number of times, and now you know three six five. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, is this real life, which I'm about to crack in a few minutes? Um, you know, really again defines the brewery, and I th- I feel like every time I've had a single cup beer, I've never been disappointed. It's just been oh, one of those. Man. I'm not trying to kiss ass. I'm just, I'm being serious. Uh, you know, no, and I'm being serious too. It one, means two, three. It's on just, us. I mean. And- and frankly, I got to throw it up the, the ladder here, uh, or up the chain of command. I mean, the reason why we can have consistency and be as good is because Rich, who owns the place and has his entire life on the line, you know, and his name is, uh, you know, so much liability, you yeah. know, comes to him. He's the one who chooses every day for the last eight years that he's cool with like, hey, I'm, I, I didn't do this to make money. If I wanted to make money, I'd stay in advertising. <laughs> it's true. Um so we can throw a lot of that back into our product. And that's not to say that our things are cheap or, you know, we're losing money. Uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, my, my paycheck is cleared every week, which is great. That's <laughs> really what we, what, we, what we aim for here. There you go. Yeah. But he's the guy who's decided, you know, time and time again, to the frustration of our finance teams, to the frustration of me, uh, the same thing. It's like, no, I want it this way. It's going to taste better this way. I want to do it this way. You know, and that's, you know, so that's that's get the a long game as and, opposed and, to the short you know, game. That is right? what it's, it is. Yeah. You know? And he makes that decision over and over again. Right. And, so and I, I got to throw my respect up the ladder there. That's that's why the beer is good because we don't expect to to be millionaires. You know, he expects to give there, people. There are no brewers brewer going to be millionaires. No, that's for sure, right? Uh, all the new guys that come in, I'm sorry, you're not going to be a millionaire. <laughs> this oh, is man. this is not the. When you get into the brewing business, I really thought it was the get rich quick scheme that no, I've been searching for. No. Pyramid, That's pyramid it, scheme. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a pyramid scheme, but yeah, it's, you're gonna be the bottom guy that's making no money. But. <laughs> I mean, it, it's got to be the, the fight. I mean, every single time we see another brewery open or another brewery close, you're seeing like a brand new evolution cycle of something else that's happening out there. It could be. Uh, someone has a great product or someone has a great idea or someone uh, didn't follow through on what they were doing or in Steve's case, nice. someone that just was tired of the game, you know, and I guess trying to fight through again. I know, Steve, you didn't think you were going to be a millionaire. You did it for the passion. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, we actually uh, we started out right around when single cut started out and uh you know, we, we, we went a different direction. We went to all, uh, you know, dark and, and uh, we, we were one of the first brewers on the island to do pastry beers. And, uh, you know, yeah, hey, we, we won a lot of awards and we got a lot of accolades and sold a lot of beer. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't want to fight anymore with the new little guy that was trying to do everything. But that's um, it. It's, it's a constant battle for people that own breweries. You're, it, you're it, it in constant nowadays. battle mode. It, it, yeah. It's well, you know, um, there are more breweries now in the United States than there ever were at any time. And in New York alone, uh, at one point, there were over 500 breweries in New York City alone back in the 1800s um, because each little community had their own brewery that took care of the, the two or three blocks that were that were there. Um, you know, everybody thinks that uh, owning a brewery, they're going to make this ton of money and going to be a rock star and they're going to be this. this I actually, got, I got something for you really quick. Now you mentioned oh, that. Shit. that. I don't know what that is, but. So um, this is interesting. <laughs> I, I was gifted this. This is um, a bottle. Produced... Wait, this, right here. This is just deliciousness. You know what this is, right, Dan? 
That's uh, you drinking some uh, some mighty real hibiscus. Oh, Don I had that. Disco. My kids were thrilled that I was drinking. My girls, excuse me, were thrilled that I was drinking pink beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's good. It's good shit. I, I wanted to. I wanted to read you this. Really so, got any extras? Keep those in the fridge. Uh, those we cellared some last time. They they that hibiscus just. Age makes the, the legs go forever yeah <laughs> that is good that is really good this is an, i didn't know what to expect from it an original and, and i'm actually pleasantly surprised mm, it's that's all i can surprised but i'm i'm happy i'm happy so this was a original uh bottle from lion brewery of new york city this original lion brewery huh. bottle lion. Uh, it was oh. found in somebody's basement uh and the woman that gave it to me before she retired um she bought it from that person basically uh if you don't know anything about lion lion was built in uh, and established in 1857 in new york city uh it was closed finally in 44 1944 it's the sixth largest brewery in the united states no one ever pays Whoa. respects to those you know yeah. big breweries that were here like you said there was a ton an ass ton of breweries in the United States back in I the think, day. What are, what are we up to? 8,000 breweries now? In yeah, United a little States? over 8,000, yeah. yeah. And um, I know with COVID, though, they're expecting to lose at least 10%, which is like, if you know, it doesn't sound a lot, that's a ridiculous number. Yeah, it's um, a lot. Uh, it is a real lot. And it's only because um, it, one of two things, either there's no capital behind it um, or, you know, um, couldn't quickly like adapt. What to like what, was what going we on. did, we were like, you know what, we're we're we we had a good run. It was it was fun. Um but uh yeah, um I'm hoping a good majority of the breweries that we know on the island and in New York City and uh and e even in the boroughs uh make it through this because there's way, way too much really good beer out there. Um and it's to to be a craft beer connoisseur, so to speak. This is, this is the best time right now. We, we're really enjoying this. Chin chin to that. And Dan, you mentioned you guys uh, were um, kind of, uh, I want to say contracting, but really like negotiating with or, or working nicely with Threes and KCBC. Did you guys come out with any collaborations uh, between those two breweries? Yeah, we have actually. We did a we did a collab with KCBC right before, well, not right before, but about a month before COVID which is actually one of my favorite beers of 2019 that we've done. Cause it was a, it was one of those little passion projects that you could never justify doing except for a special occasion. <laughs> you know what I mean? AKA the sales director is looking at us like, how am I going to sell this? Go sell you know, we lost that. money on this, right? You know that. <laughs> yeah. How am I going to market this thing? So what we style this, was it? It was an Imperial Schwartz beer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, fuck. And, the, yeah. and we would love that. But yeah, we how do you with get them. everyone to do it? We brewed with cascara. Do you uh, do you know what cascara is? You know that shit? Yes. I do not. I it's, used it. It's the little cherry that cherry grows around a bean. coffee bean. Yes. Wow. Yes, ah, and right. it imparts, it actually it does impart a cherry flavor. Yeah. If you like, let it sit long enough. Cherry coffee flavor. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's it's crazy. Um, and it's really, really tasty. Um, it so happens that our good friends opened up New York City's best goddamn co coffee roaster just a few blocks away from the brewery. Um, they do all wood fired coffee roasting, uh, really? mighty oak coffee roasters. If you're ever in Queens, it's worth just, just go by and get a coffee, get some beans. It's incredible. Little yeah. tiny shop in our neighborhood. It's beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, so they pulled in this cascara for us from, uh, their like prized secret supplier. And yep. we brewed up this beautiful traditional Schwartz beer, but we kicked it up to about 8% ABV. We yeah. let it lager in our My horizontal goodness. lagering tent. Thanks I can get for with that. About five and a half, six weeks. We aged it on cascara for the last week. Um, and it was it was dope. It was amazing. And uh, how, how many barrels of that did you do? That was only thirty or sixty barrels. So it wasn't uh it wasn't massive, but it was a good amount of beer. I, I'm just trying to think of how much cascara you used in it. It was an embarrassingly large amount of cascara. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, that was definitely one of those times when you you gave the receipt to the finance team and be like, oh, you you, Sorry. Approved, you approved this and you asked me for it. And they're like, I don't remember approving. No, no, no. Oh, it was yeah, yeah. last week. You, 
We saved three thousand dollars. We're good, We're good. <laughs> because the plane dropped it from a parachute at three thousand right. feet. Yeah. So we were was... supposed to fly there and pick it ourselves, but nah. we paid somebody to do it yes, for yeah. us. So you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> no, we it turned it up... out great. It was it was dope, and the KCBC crew and us, um, they're another like music obsessive yeah. brewery. Yeah. Um, so one of our shared passions between our two teams is we're both huge, um, stoner metal fans. We're both also huge stoners and huge metal fans and huge <laughs> stoner metal fans. So you guys got along with Bobby. Well, I mean, yeah, Bobby yeah from Bobby, barrier is Bobby's Bobby's brought the party a couple of times. Yeah, he has. Um, so we, uh, we did our first, we're big fans of the band sleep. I don't know if that, if that means anything to you, but, um, this very, very classic legendary, California based um, stoner metal band. So hmm. we called it Mod Dube, which is a little reference both to Sleep and to the Dune novels. Ah, the, and, I, uh, I like Dune. It was dope, man. We we printed it with black light um, poster uh, labels and we canned it up and just wrote it all across. We had a couple cool parties and hmm. nothing on the books with threes, but I'd love to do something because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of their beer, regardless of yeah. our new professional yep. relationship. I, I just. I adore what they do, and uh, their dedication and passion for the craft is something remarkable. And and they're the, big on lagers as well, too. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, and incredible, incredible quality for sure. So their lineup they have, is very versatile. I, I like. I've been there once, and yeah. what they had, I went. Wow, it's like something for everyone. If you wanted that double, totally. you can have the double, or the double dry hop, or then the lager, or the pilsner, or just totally. something. They do a great job. And that's after our heart too. We're we're big believers, and not every brewery should be an all styles brewery. But right. if you can and you do it well, that's like that's something to really tip your hat to. And they do fooder loggers, which is super unique, yes. um, which is awesome. But they we don't have, have horizontal. I think, I, uh, so. I think the only thing I've had from them is short food, short fuse, which is a like a smoked fooder. Yeah, smoked fooder mm. lager. Yeah delicious i actually <laughs> just i just got a delivery from them this week so i've got some i've got some bleep pills in my fridge and Ooh. oh uh, that's great that's the pills that's is great. good very tasty and we got uh and some echo of nothing that mexican lager that we made those tasty now, enchiladas out of now anybody that's that's out there that's listening and you hear fooder um it, it's a actually it's a it's a wood vessel it's what you would ferment your beer in instead of being stainless it's wood um, sometimes, sometimes they are, um, been steamed where all the oak flavor is out of it and they just use it for bugs. So you can collect any of your sour bugs in it and just reuse it again and again and again, mm -hmm. or it does have an oak flavor to it, or depending on whatever the wood was, uh, will add, uh, you know, partake in some of the flavoring, uh, for the beer. Those are becoming pretty popular fooders, right? I know. Fifth Hammer. Uh, Allagash has, has been using them forever. Yep. Uh, Trogues, I know I had them installed. Yep. And I know uh, Fifth Hammer got yeah. a bunch. And then they got it the week after we were there. Or they got like it the week before we were there. Like, uh, they were oh, there that's, that's and true. not brewing. That's correct. When they were like, they got there like the week before. I think we had the show. Did they have yep. to, um, they have to season them. So they have to run water through them for like a week or something like that. Right. They had them hooked it up. It depends on the company. Um, yeah. Some companies will will deliver them to you um, already steamed, you know, where where there's no more oak flavor, but it will trap any of your yeast particulate. Um, gotcha. and then, so is that if so you're brewing sour you beers, beer you don't have to worry about it infecting any of your other brews? Is that the? But it, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a wild yeast, or right, if you just it it will um, inoculate your beer with whatever. Um, you know, yeast particle that you're using, hmm. um, so that it doesn't cross contaminate whatever else you're doing. Whatever you're putting in it, that's what it. you're putting in it. You're not gonna put your normal IPA in at any time. So right, 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 right. Be different. Hmm. It would no longer be a normal IPA, though. That's no, it would not be your <laughs> half stack or any uh, anything like that. It'd be a Swedish. So IPA. I made uh, a really good yeah. decision, and I went and got more electric blue yeah but the bad decision is that's the only beer i got so i went and got literally one beer uh-huh and been drinking it beer. the entire time it is a good so you're in dire straits for the rest of this show. no well he's he, he, he I'm go, have to make another trip that's the problem yeah that's but. i was gonna say he can just go back to flag and get is this real life which is going to be delicious well, I do, I had, uh, not to plug another brewery, but we but I I, tried water they taxi. didn't have, 
Yeah, water. I think I beat all you guys because this is really good. Yeah. I, again, I had That's that. Digging. Terrific. It was very, very good. Different. Thanks. Summary. And a dope uh, pause I, on that beer too, for sure. This yeah. year, my kids uh, were thrilled that I was drinking. Like Some now, beer? every time like uh, beer. I talk beer, they have to ask me how many different fucking colors the beer can come in. <laughs> <laughs> So, Same thing with mine. My my kids, as were you very heard, excited about that. Yeah, and that um, you would give me that can, Mike, of uh, from uh, Root and Branch, that yes. uh, sour that was purple. Yes, that blew their fucking mind. Uh, <laughs> that a beer was purple. <laughs> so they got purple. They got pink. Those dudes make now this... crazy sour. Uh, Dan, do you guys uh, produce any sour sour IPA sour yeah. adjunct? What's the uh, oh yeah? What's the sour yeah, game looking like? Sours. Yeah, yeah, we got a bunch. Um, we we are kind of one of those all styles breweries, so you know we we do a, uh, a, you a did bunch a couple of, of bottle the bottle sours, right? We did, yeah, just a couple yeah. weeks ago. So we don't do the fooder stuff. Um, that's awesome. I just don't know where we would ever put them. Um, <laughs> we instead uh, in Queens have a uh, little Grundy tank. So we've got little ah. seven barrel tanks. So uh, they're like independent stainless steel. They all have their own little micro microflora blend in each one ah. of them. So. We That's have awesome. our own house Brett blend that we we got a few years ago, which we picked up in a barrel and Y yeast uh, propagated it and stored it for us. So a few of those have that Brett blend in there, and some have some lacto and pedio blends. And our head brewer in Queens is a is still actually a very active and exploratory uh, uh, home brewer, but also baker too. So he's he's a yeast obsessive. He's got a whole bunch of different cultures. Just so bread and beer are, all day all day yeah yeah <laughs> you guys Petio came out with can't patio no more yeah exactly <laughs> you guys came out with reality is a new fiction the oak age is uh blackberry and lime yeah and then you had the uh Mech- mecha mecha and you mecha say, mecha all... mecha uh yeah, the, you got two the more, other one two more and that was on four, the four meaches four meaches there you go uh the cranberry and pinot noir barrel so that had to sit for a little while it did yeah and those are all uh alan uh, Bush is his name. He's our he's our head brewer in Queens. Those are his babies. So yeah, those went in around right after Thanksgiving for a Micha 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 Micha, mm. uh, and that sat there for that whole time on uh, on Pinot Noir and on cranberries, and we just bottled it up a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. It bumped yeah, it up to a, like super... a seven five, which was was it awesome did, for yeah. a sour. Yeah, and I would imagine yeah. that's another one of those things that's not a not a profit generator it is certainly not we um for those we we actually use a mobile bottler so he brings mm. a bottling rig to the brewery because we just don't have room in queens five thousand square feet we can't sure. store a bottler we're not using it and um i did an actual um non-comic spit take when i got the invoice for that <laughs> you know cases of beer you know and I think the bill was taller than the pallet was, but I was looking you know, for my, my, my bottler. I have the red old school oh, capper. Oh, it the Stop it. Stop it's, it. Yeah. It's here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. It's, it's well, after that bill, we're going to be doing that next time. Yeah. So <laughs> and then wax. Back to it's gonna dip in wax. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so, uh, homebrew 101. Yeah. So Dan, uh, my, my question I ask every, every single person that comes on is, uh, uh, on our podcast. Um, on our show. Ah, radio show. Yes. It's in podcast radio form show. afterwards. We are live, yes. sir. This is true. I, 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 I messed up today. God, you're um, fucking nervous. I'm, I'm, get, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you. I'm very... I don't give a shit. Um, all right. So, for you, what was your the, the first beer that... The first curl that you really, really enjoy? Mm-hmm. And what is the beer that now you drink besides anything from Single Cup? Oh, man. That's dope. I love all that. Um, the first one is easy, but it's a two-way tie. College two. Um, so for me, Ale Smith X. Ah, extra pale there ale. You go. That was my first go-to. Um, we would buy those bombers before band yeah. practice and split them around. You know, we quickly div- uh, figured out in college that the yes, the the Natty Light half barrel is eighty dollars, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's only four percent alcohol, and you could get Stone IPA at seven two, Bingo. seven five, whatever it used to be. Boom. Or like a buck forty if you had somebody over twenty one buy it at the brewery. So that was a very quick math lesson for us. Um. So yeah. <laughs> so Ale Smith X, and then a uh, Double Bastard, very specifically. Oh, okay. 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 Huh. That's that's double bastard. No, it's yeah, double I gotta, bastard. I got a I got a DB up there. 
I have one of those somewhere sitting on the old Arrogant Bastard. The I old, love that original goddamn label. label. Yeah, it's the so original good. Love label. the label. King of labels. Uh, for beer that I love drinking outside of single cut, which is an important caveat, company men all, you know, would have to would have sure. to single cut if not. Um, gee, man. I mean, like, the thing that fills the fridge, you know, for day in and day out for, you know, outside drinking, you know, uh, the Modellos and the High Lifes and all that stuff, you know, whatever. Oh. As far as, like, craft beer uh, locally, I've always loved Transmit. Um, and then, like, going out, like, a little further, I mean, there's just so much great beer in New York State. Um, oh, obviously, yep. Suarez gets all the brewery love, and he deserves it. The beer is incredible. Um, I swing by all the time going up and up and down from the breweries. And, and, and nationwide, um, I'm still a Big Stone fan. I, I that's, mm. that's very much what my taste DNA is. So for me, a lot of stuff that comes out of that brew house is, is just really keyed in for where my palate is. So I'd love it. What uh, about I, st- what about style? What is your favorite style? Favorite style? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, a great Vienna lager, hmm. um, which is like perfect. I love Meritzen too, and I would drink a 365. And a Vienna lager is, a lot of people don't really understand. They, they, they hear lager and they're like, oh, but a Vienna lager is really, it's it's a niche. Um, and yeah. And it's, it's a unique beer, and it's so. If you really get a good one, it's so crisp, dry, right. just a wonderful. Dental, bro. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like the snap from a slim jim, just done. And I love classic uh, English styles too. So a good pint of bitter is 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 okay. really like where I'm at. Nice. I love, uh, huh. You know, uh, you know, uh, spare cool. tire aside, you know, you got you got to be mindful of those ABV counts. <laughs> when you're out and about in the world, you know. Yes, yes. Steve, and, what? Uh, I don't think anyone we've ever asked you. What? Are, what? Uh, what? What craft beer bit you? And what's your favorite style these days? Don't say other half because you you've been drinking a shit ton of other half. A lot of other half for like a week. <laughs> week straight other half. Finally got binge. that other half distro, man. You can yeah, those pants, you can get it anywhere. A buddy of mine is his daughter lives literally a block away from other half, so he goes in. To visit her every week, and what does he do? He comes home with all the new stuff. There you go. And then he drops by my house and goes, "What do you want?" And I'm like, "All of it." <laughs> it uh, based up on the photos we saw from July Fourth weekend, yeah. all of it. <laughs> yeah, it me. Uh, but um, oh yeah, you know, um, you know, for me, my the, I originally started out with German style beers. Um, when, Back in the day, I, I was drinking, you know, Hofbrau and and um, not even Saint Pauli's girl, but it, it was like Cronenborg and all these German style lagers. Mini kegs then, under the Whitestone Bridge for a Mets game. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Hofbrau mini was kegs. My invite, man. Yeah, that's I great. I'm playing wiffle ball. It was the best. I'm talking about like 2003, 2004. It was Ooh, the, shit. Yeah, it's going back. The first like real craft like sam smith's sam oh smith. yeah anything from sam smith's the mm-hmm. oatmeal stout i was just like oh my god what is this and then i don't know if anybody remembers foghorn yeah, yeah sierra nevada foghorn oh, okay. barley wine right crushed me like All- i was like what are all these flavors in this thing? They don't make it anymore. It, celebration was it for me? I mean, celebration was like, what the what the shit is I, this? I, I knew at that point I was like, I really like multi comp. Uh, I'm really, really digging petite, um, lagerish IPAs. Hmm. Cool. If you want yeah. to call it that, like something that is sessionable. And, and, uh, I'll. I'll Tiny Juicy. Dude, that was a big hit this weekend. I, grab, I grabbed I some of drink, those. I can drink Tiny Juicy every all the time because it's really got a nice hot profile. It's got that, you know, nice bite, dry, light, 4 point. Sessionable. I, I think they're like 4%, 4.5% alcohol. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, those things you could just crush those all day long. Yes. Am I, I going to drink, drink this? Yes, I'm going to drink oh, this. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> Hey um, Steve, what about what about Timothy Taylor? You a fan of the Landlord? Is that a beer that ever did anything for you? Uh um, you know, of course. Again, 
I, I became such a English style, like guy, like, mm -hmm. um, like, and then I, my own style came along was, was pastry style, but we, we did English style. Um, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's a hard one. Uh, Bluebird bitter Conistons. Oh, you, you mess with that. Yes. Yes. Oh, and and the beer. thing, and, well, the thing for me too was, um, those are traditional bitters. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, mm -hmm. it was a traditional style beer, bitter wise, not. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It needs to be like, you know, 50 degrees, uh, in, in that range and just poured in, into a, into a pint that is. As you're writing the alimony check. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Messed up. Nailed it, man. Nailed it. Dan, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. So let's yeah. uh, let's get some big plugs in. Let's let's talk yes. about everything uh, single cut. Every you, guys way... got a lot of, uh, you guys got a lot of things that you're releasing. So let's get let's yeah. hear that. <laughs> well, you don't know it. Wait, his name is Terry. So what's oh. your new release coming out? Oh, wow. Yeah, that makes so sense, guys. <laughs> Why am it's I like confused one all of a sudden? Because uh, like, uh, they have a just... new release called Terry Meets Julie. Terry Meets that's... Julie, that's yeah. right. You spend all day writing copy for these things, and they just complete inside scoop, because otherwise you'd have to be a subscriber to our insider's mailing list to know this. Ooh, how would you do that? And how do you do that? At singlecut.com. There it is. Damn it. I, I just dropped my phone. Singlecut.com. Singlecut.com. <laughs> I don't have last year, but it was draft only. We've never. Physics sounds. Mm. Mm. So it's how a do you... whole... Hmm, how do you know what sir. like punk rock what do you have that like? tastes like Rammstein? <laughs> oh man that would be good that'd be some reinska boat shit right there there you That's go yes, it would. Yes, yes sir but creepier and probably I mean, yeah we, we listen to the music and then we create flavors which like emulate the sensations of it so the first one was glam which we did a couple years ago yes cool. uh, yeah right cool. glam was super bright we had a really low ph on that beer we wanted it to be very bright very tangy um so it had the yes um um, the psilocybin count is debatable <laughs> on the beer. Um, and get an um, Uber to go home. Yes. 100% a joke for any DEA agent yes. or SLA agents to listen to the word. This is a joke. Allegedly. Joke. We always say what allegedly. I was very concerned with like whether the SLA was listening to the podcast. <laughs> That's never my know. life. Tomorrow. Never know. Um, so, yeah. So, that'll be coming out this week. It was a huge. It will be available in the tap rooms for this weekend. So. Cool. That's your little inside scoop Ooh. on that. And beautiful, super, super cool new labels on this one. So I'm going to get my brother-in-law over there tomorrow. I this am. Weekend. Of one so, new, new Zealand band, so I'm, I'm excited. one New Zealand band? Alien Weaponry. That's the only one I know. Oh, yes. Flight of the Continent, though. Conference. Holy crap. <laughs> that cartoon is crazy. <laughs> and fun. If you, I, I actually enjoyed some of it. There's some I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But uh, the vast majority of it was pretty good. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, tell me, the dinner bell is, is ringing for me. Ooh. It's been ringing actually off the hook. Dinner. For the last hour. Dinner now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Listen, Dan, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, this, this is 